Welcome back to another episode of Pulling the Trigger, the FTCR podcast discussion series where me, Stefan, and MBM go through all of the Studio Trigger series and projects and maybe some other stuff if we feel like it. And just talk about them and how they make us feel and like what was their significance to the greater scheme of all of it, if any. Reactions and analyses... And if you if you caught a, if you caught the first episode, which of course went very in depth on Kill a Kill, with my with my first viewing reactions and Mexi's very in depth look into the general meanings and themes behind it, which I th- which I still think turned out super. I think that turned out even better than I uh, than I initially believed it would be. Well, thank you. I mean, I I like to think I put my ideas together in a coherent manner kind of a good thing i suppose <laughs> but yeah hopefully uh i guess this episode is going to be a little different uh hopefully we can uh continue our discussion of trigger without me forgetting die buster and gun buster again so i want to apologize for that one <laughs> um but yeah whereas kill a kill was more of a deep dive episode um this next episode, we're going to kind of cover uh, a bunch of different trigger projects. We're going to cover a lot of the online animations that were put out, some of the shorter animation that they put out. Because um, there's a few things about, you know, if you're going to ma- be an animation studio, there are some key golden rules to know about with animation. The first one is that animation is really expensive. The second thing is that it takes a shit ton of money to make any kind of animation. And the third one is that you need money and lots of it if you want to make animation. So sometimes in order to get that money, you switch your format to more shorter releases. But, you know, Trigger is definitely that studio where they're not going to let that hinder their quality uh, standards there. No, sir. This is... uh, these shorter animations are some of the best things ever created by Trigger, I'd say. Well, I didn't realize this because, yeah, because yeah, we're, we're, we're for the, 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 this one, this one's gonna be kind of kind of more of a hodgepodge where it's like if you saw at the end, see you can see in the title and you can see if you heard in the last part, we're gonna be going through five different uh, Trigger projects in this. Like the the next ep- couple up, ep- the next episodes going in, will probably only cover like two two series, but like those are much more like grander in scope and more feel like actual full grown series so there, there's gonna be more to kind of go through while with here not only are all five all five are not only in very weird uh places in regards to where they came from and what they mean for trigger itself but i also the, you mentioned about money when it's like all five of these kind of have a weird relationship with both like with the money and like why trigger made it how why trigger made it and how trigger made it to begin with and it's all connected to the money and i didn't even really think about like i knew they were all weird but when you put it like about money i'm like oh crap that is right <laughs> sorry <laughs> dude but we live in a capitalist hellscape get used to it <laughs> So we're going to start, because yeah, again, we, like I mentioned, uh, technically two of these series that we're going to be talking about are the first projects that Trigger created, but th- why we're going to go through like my viewing order, because I kind of had a weird... Because I wanted to put all the net animations together, so like Inferno Cop and Turning Girls, which technically came out before Kill a Kill, I put the... I viewed that at the same time as Ninja Slayer, so that went in... Though I put all, all those three together, while the, the, the this first one we're going to talk about, when supernatural battles became commonplace that was their f- like full follow-up series after kill a kill so that's why i watched it directly afterwards so i'm like oh might as well might as well since i that that's what i watched might as well talk about that first and what is going to be interesting about this uh this discussion is th- this is good this is going to be a first reaction to both of us because mexi also hadn't seen it so he was watching this for the first time just like the same as me yeah i mean it's kind of wrong to label myself a uh, trigger expert. I'm just someone who's like seen a few of the shows before. But no, some of these were uh, my first viewing going through some of them uh, with like Turning Girls and yeah, Supernatural Battle. Supernatural Battle, not really my cup of tea. Um, one cool difference between uh, uh, our viewing tastes is, uh, Stefan, you're, uh, you're basically a fan of Slice of Life anime. <laughs> the more you're uh subdue storylines correct yeah yeah pretty much i mean no not not in a negative way like i no 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 this honestly like you you because it's different from my point of view versus 
I'm not really someone who really cares for Slice of Life. Like, to the point, like, I can't even get into B-Stars just because the plot of the first season is who's going to get the lead in the school play. And it's like, I don't care. Like, sorry, it's a little too below my radar. But, um, no, it was this was a fun little... I guess a uh, taste detour, you know, you should always do that. You should always try to expand whatever you're actually watching. So um, I'm glad I watched it, but I, uh, I will admit that it was, uh, it was a bit difficult to get myself to finish it despite its length. It's not that long. It's really, it should have been uh, like one night's worth of viewing and done, but it that really just the kind of some of the high school aspects of uh this particular anime was just it didn't really get its claws or its hooks into me didn't have that trigger appeal that usually gets me fired up to like binge a whole show yeah that yeah that that was something i wanted to like just first off first off to explain kind of the weirdness that is this year because it's like the the series like on the surf like if you watch this if you watch the series in a bubble it's like there isn't really anything weird and like about it but it's the fact that it is trigger that that is making and this is their this was their follow up to kill a kill is was something like it, 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 there's all these little pieces like first off is that of all of their major like main project series this is their only one that is an adaptation well this is their this is one of two that is an adaptation but is their only one that is an adaptation of a light novel specific yeah which is yeah when supernatural battles became commonplace or as it's like shortened uh, the the short version of uh, inu battle but yeah, it, whereas pretty much all of the rest of their series are yeah original projects and like stuff that they developed in house, this is the only one that is yeah an adaptation of something. And because of that, like like what a lot of like I had a I had a, a couple of people like respond to me about like stuff about about this like who are fans of Trigger respond to me about this too that they were like oh yeah the Trigger series that feels absolutely nothing like a Trigger series and even watching it I'm like yeah. Like, other than, like, some of the character designs and, like, the way some of the moves, I can be like, okay, I can see as that, like, that having trigger-esque qualities to it. But other than that, like, the pacing, the way the story's told and everything, it's like, yeah, you can tell that this is, like, an adaptation rather than, like, something fully bred from the cloth of trigger. And I get, there is no proof, like, I, I couldn't find anything looking into it about it but my my theory about this was that trigger took on this project like they signed on to do because yeah this came out um fall 2014 uh kill a kill was when uh, fall 2013 to winter 2014 what my belief is that they signed on to this project while kill a kill was still going on so this was before they really knew how huge kill a kill was going to get so this was basically like a job like they like with the studio it might have been the the light novel uh uh, company they were like oh man make this series so they they signed on to it kill a kill ended up being like bigger than they like they ended up being like a big enough success but since they had signed on to it they did this series and the reason why they never did any more series like this in the future is because they like they they were able to hold they they had enough money to complete the project that they wanted to do that they never had to go out of their way to do these adaptations again and i feel like that yeah that is probably the answer of how uh i mean that is a very interesting point uh is that it's not just that oh hey this was one of many future adaptations that trigger became renowned for like no there's they did this, and then uh, we'll talk about the other one there, Ninja Slayer being another adaptation as well. But in terms of like their full like multi-season shows, we never see them go full hard on a light novel adaptation. I mean, even in their more current stuff, it's still own things inspired by their love of other things, um, as opposed to just, you know, oh, hey, here's the source material. Here are your characters. Work with it. Uh, which, you know, it, it, it just kind of, cause it's very noticeable in this show. Cause you know, when we're just talking about how, like how good trigger shows usually work on their theming, you don't get a lot of that in, uh, in supernatural battles. I mean, you get some interesting wacky characters, but in terms of like how the characters tie with, with the plot to tie to it, it's, it, there's some disjointedness. There's it, there's a lot of moments to it, but um, it, it it really just doesn't have the you know the cohesiveness that that you usually see uh, with all of the elements with like a well made trigger show. Uh, it's still a good show. Um, 
I feel one of the big things that like skews my perception on it is just definitely um, I'm not the biggest fan of harem animes just kind of in general. It's not to say they can't be good. Um, the wonderful octi tuple triplets. I mean, that's a good one. Quintessential no, quintuplets. <laughs> sure. That is that one. That one's great. Hey. There, there are good ones. There are winners out there, but um, I don't know. It's one of those genres, just just it hardcore, hard coded into its makeup. To me, are just like I have some issues with it. You know, just kind of uh, supernatural battle is has a huge for some reason with these harem animes. The protagonist is the most completely unlikable slash incompetent human being, and yet every female within his proximity is obsessed with him like to the point that they are like having life crises over how this stupid boy might feel about them it's like ladies you're all way too good for him like there is no reason for any of this drama if anything the discussion should be how quickly can we just toss him out of our lives and get over him but i mean especially just because it's also a product of its time as well um it it's a very formulaic harem uh, anime light novel adaptation. Um, it is that is yeah because that is one of the other weird the, the one of the other things that makes this this project so weird to begin with is that it basically is a Trojan horse into slice of life harem like like just 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 quickly go over the like just the the, the premise and stuff like that because again I know there might be a, yeah, let's actually talk about the show now. <laughs> Show one stamp. <laughs> there might be a lot of people who may not like who may not either either may not have heard of it or have heard of it, but haven't checked it out. And just yeah, so just to ex- to explain it, the story set in a high school. Obviously, it's about these group Anime. of kids that are part of a literature club. When one day Anime. they suddenly develop superpowers, and they're just like just they're they're all just hanging out in their club room, and then bam, they get powers. Uh, one of the girls can control the elements. Uh, one of them can stop time, so they're a JoJo. Uh, one of them can, uh, uh, basically kind of rewind a, like, a person so that they're, like, the, like, their body, like, basically to, to heal them and rewind, like, a body part to, like, a certain, uh, like, to a previous point. Uh, one of them can create anything out of, like, their mind, like, anything, they can either, like, bring, create object, like, duplicate objects, or they can, like, create portals to go some other, some place. And then the main kid, Ando, basically just has a flame that he absolutely loves but it's useless and so the, the so the premise is that okay it's uh the, it's these high school students that suddenly develop superpowers and you think that oh this is a story about these high these how, how do they deal with having superpowers and it's like oh maybe it's a the the the, 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 the central premise kind of i mean the title itself kind of leads into the whole thing of uh oh they have superpowers but there's no like villains to fight or anything, so it's just kind of they're just kind of going about their lives with super with, with superpowers. <laughs> Except as you go on, you realize they're not really using their superpowers that much. It's just kind of like it's there, and then you realize that oh, it's the, the, this supernatural like power show, and it's like psych bitch, it's a harem slice of life, <laughs> which is such a fucking scam. Like because they have right there in the intro, they have um. Uh... The little lolly using her, like, basically her summoning powers to create a giant robot mech, and you are under the assumption. I mean, like, other animes have done this. I mean, Utna does it with the whole flying horses thing where, you know, the opening lies. And it's okay if the opening lies. It doesn't need to be, you know, a trailer. But I was so under the assumption that I was going to get at least one big, like, fight brawl because, spoilers, the supernatural battles in the title they're not the kind of battles you think, especially given the whole uh, synopsis there of, you know, they develop superpowers, which we all know and always has been just an allegory for teenage sexuality, whether it be like the normal kind or or any of the different ways it's been like used in stories. But I honestly, with this show, the, the big battles that actually really occur throughout this whole show are miscommunications and mistranslations. Like, I... If anything, if this show had like one thing that was like a really fun through line for the whole show was the fact that just about every fun, wacky story, every plot thread was brought about because the main character in his whole um, 
I'm just going to call it his act in a fool. He, they, they, um, they constantly call him a chuni and like a chinobio ch- ch- all the time. So it's like, oh yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's his diagnosis. It, it's basically, he has like, you know, immature delusions. You know, he thinks he's a superhero. He's the main character of the world. He has one foot in reality, one foot in his light novel. Like he's... I'm sure it's a very familiar trope to a lot of us that get a little too excited about anime, I'm sure. Um, But because of that, a lot of his gimmicks involve his obsession with, you know, the the double meanings of uh, words and then like their translation in of other words and then the meanings of those translations to make his own little like gimmicky chants and names and spells and i mean it'd be so damn endearing if he wasn't such a loser about it um it just and it i I think it's really funny too because i mean it starts problems off immediately with one of with best girl basically so despite there being multiple girls in the club the best girl isn't even a member of said club um but there's a whole plot with the student council president where he basically she develops a power too and all of the names have really cool uh names uh to their powers uh stefan referred to them as jojos but um they kind of do the whole like weird jojo-y names for their powers so uh Ando basically gives this character who has the ability to steal powers. He writes a letter where he try he dubs her a uh, grateful robber, uh, but unfortunately, the robber gets mistranslated as lover, and she thinks that the initiation level or initiation letter is a love letter. And Ando does is not a man enough to you know basically correct his mistake until she's basically like eyeball high in love and infatuation with him and he has to break her poor heart and it's like damn this was quick i was i was getting a little emotional by episode two i thought it was a it was a pretty fast development there like that's where i knew like okay you know triggers fingers are in here because i'm feeling these emotions and well, it really wasn't expecting that right from the get go. <laughs> they give you the feel. They give you the feels with her, and then and then she doesn't show. And then she 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 shows she shows up once like midway through the season, and then once at the very end of the series. And it's like she she she's she's in the main credits. She's in the end credits, but she's just like they 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 they, they have it set up because yeah, because she's in the, the first tease. episode. The absolute tease of it all. She's in the first episode where it's like, oh, the whole plot of the first episode is that they learn that, oh, she also has powers. So it's like this thing of like, oh, maybe other people in this school also have powers. And it's like, oh, they're they're kind of like fighting her. And that's like the battle. Then she's in the second episode. So you're like, oh, she's going to be a main character as well. But then nope, she like, yeah, she goes back into the background and they just pull her out when they need to. It's like, it's such a, it's such a weird thing. Cause it's like, oh, even, even normal traditional slice of life, stuff like that. They do that all the time. So it's like, I don't know why. They just decided, oh, we don't need, we don't need her anymore, unless the unless the whole reason was just because, oh, we already did her love story, like we we did her love story first. Now we gotta do the love first. story of the other four. We need to we need to sh- give a reason. It's like even though we have her, we need to give a reason why these other four like him. So now let's spend all the time just focusing on them. And it's all the weakest shit ever. I mean, so then the story basically goes into Tokimeki Memorial mode, and you we basically, like you said, each episode is basically the next girl's uh, path to her to her trauma and her ending. Even though some of them are a little weak. Um, I mean, we we can pretty much just like go through some of the girls here because you have so you have Sayumi, you have the the class president who's not really the class president; she's the club president, and I guess her whole her whole gimmick is just being a uh, young proper lady who was told by her family that she best be young and proper lest she not be a good enough person uh which you know is is it's something that actually occurs in life it hurts actual people it's something to be explored in literature i suppose but um i don't know it it feels kind of basic not not in a ph sense just more in a temperature sense uh, <laughs> her feelings feel the most tacked on of all of them, just because it feels like the, the, like the the other. I say the other two, kind of three. You can argue, like you can see. Okay, th- th- this is how like this is how like they get their feelings toward him. But with her, it's just kind of like, oh, he's the he's nice to her, so she likes him. And it's just like it, it, I don't like I don't buy. It. I don't really buy. Yeah, it. She, she's just there, but 
two, but I do. And there are two things about her that are of note. The first thing is that you know Ando and all of his infinite stupidity is correct on one thing. Sayumi does look way better in glasses, so you got to give, <laughs> a, you know, a wrong clock was right twice a day, so we got to give Ando that one. Um, the other one too is uh, tying into how this show is basically a show about miscommunication. I do enjoy the whole issue he has where he believes that he offended her because he mentioned her like former class activities and then she all of a sudden kind of got uh cold to him and she mentions that she took an allergy medication and the best part is that it actually is the case that like all of the miscommunication all of his like what ifing and coming up with situations in his head was for nothing she just took an allergy medicine or took some other kind of wink wink medicine and just got a little sleepy so I did at least like um, her whole like her whole tie in into the theme of mistranslations and miscommunications was her whole no I, I literally just took a took a pill like calm chill out <laughs> yeah yeah that, that, that was a fun twist yeah because that, that whole episode is like that, that, that is one of the few episodes that kind of deals with a ramifications of them having powers because he because he thinks that oh because yeah because he, he she knows that she was the student council yeah she was the student council president in like the previous like school like at her previous school but she didn't run this year so he's worried that oh no maybe she didn't do that because uh because because she has her powers and she didn't want to like do that with like she didn't want to go and do that while worrying about her powers so he's like feeling guilty of oh maybe it was because i for maybe because I, I was so hard at convincing these people to keep their powers that i'm like oh maybe maybe it's partially my fault so it's like it, it is one of those times where you see i'm like kind of like trying to think things over and trying to be a bit more sensitive and like helping the others in like trying to figure out something regarding the others and it is insane that like their powers are used so much in the plot for how little they actually matter like i don't know to kind of i did want to at least mention this before everything was that whole scene where they are kind of like kind of coming up with their code names or whatever did that not feel so like my hero yeah. Like it, well, that, well, the thing is, like, like a, so, yeah, well, so many of the powers are, like, I mean, like, yeah, like, one of the girls They're straight is up, like, well, even their names, the, the, although I did enjoy, you know, going to how it's a, a very literature, very wordplay heavy show, um, I do like how all the names are meant to be structured in a similar way, so they have all these very rhythmic names, but yeah, they have this whole scene where they're just sitting in class coming up with their superhero name, and I swear to God, one of them basically says Froki, it's like, sure. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I think they, they got clothes clock root of origin world create it's like over element yeah they have like a lot dark and dark which is dark and dark is just like a part the perfect a crazy and name it's so weird because you know um with with other like things that have superheroes you know how x-men has the whole moloch morlock things where you know you have the mutants that have powers that still let them pass in society but you have the mutants that you know it affects their physical appearance and they're unable to pass in society because again this all ties back to that it's a metaphor for certain sexual things wink wink nudge nudge but i think it was <laughs> uh i think it's just really interesting that none of these girls had a power that was not easy to hide and yet the plot of two of the girls whole thing is that oh no how am i gonna hide my superpower from my closest friend hide it from my family it's like pretty easily i suppose like you could just not use it like none of you have a third arm sticking out of your forehead like i think you're good i think you'll you'll survive and they don't even use, yeah because yeah, they don't yeah one of like the, 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 there's there's the whole there there's the uh uh Jifuyu, who, who who is who is like who is like our our, our resident lolly the lolly uh, of, of the series who yeah who, who's the grade schooler that hangs with them and got powers with them and her whole thing is basically that oh she she's nervous about being around her friend because she doesn't want to like tell her friend the secret and it's like her friend is basically jealous because she's like oh you're like you're hiding something from me and all that stuff and then like it's Best like oh, friend Excuse me, I believe you mean a uh, life partner? Uh, she, she made a statement in the middle, a canon statement, that they would be together forever. And uh, if I know my trigger shows, there's uh, always at least some tones of lesbianism. 
Yeah, she, she yeah she she is the most she is the most lesbian of of them by far and, <laughs> and thank thankfully even though again like Chifuyu also has a crush on Ando at the very least they like they, they don't take they don't take it like seriously like the other girls like oh oh she she is she is also like somebody who he the, she she's also somebody she's not trying to fight ever. she 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 doesn't consider herself a rival she's willing to get into a gimp suit yes the child does get into at least not a super sexy gimp suit but uh but no at least you know you're correct that with her her plot is just more that she likes hanging out with them and she has her own friend issues but uh it's not to the extent that she believes her she never claims herself to be like a love rival uh for the for pro 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 tag coon i would say there it is very clearly like a crush like she very clearly has feelings for him but it's not like something like oh like the story is saying that oh she has a chance like the other ones it's like no okay it's clearly it's clearly a great skill yeah Yeah, it's more emoto it's pure it's pure like he's like a big brother from another mother type deal yeah, and it's like okay, they 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 did that 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 that's fine. Uh, oh, and I, one thing I wanted also wanted to mention about the names, which is a little detail I really like, was that because the whole reason like when with the whole grateful robber thing, and uh, one of the girls asks like, oh, why did you make it like so like like why did you make it like write it in that way so that 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 can view that mistake could happen and he said that oh i wanted to give like i all of our name all of like the powers of our names have the same amount of kanji written in it which is like his way of being like we're all equal and it's like by doing that to, for for the president it's like oh it's his his way of telling her that oh you're one of us you're with us and it's like it's like little things like that that like i really like like a, a lot of like all of the stuff that they do about like right like yeah like writing kanji and like about language and like writing and all that so i I think that that is so, so, so much of the series is very just a typical slice of life. But when you throw in those little things like that, it's like, oh, that that that's something really cool. It's like, oh, I like I you you learn a lot. You can learn a lot about yeah, like Japanese language through like watching this. <laughs> like like what like one of the moments I really liked was when the the uh, the uh, teacher is like scolding. She the, the teacher gives him back his test, and she's basically like, yeah, you 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 wrote all of these like overly complicated answers, but they were all technically right. So I had to mark it. I had to mark it right, even though I'm mad that I did. <laughs> I'm mad that I had to because you're technically right. Yeah, no, it's uh, there's so many examples in there about you know the there's humor involved in it uh, of the translation uh usually it's of japanese to english there's i think there's maybe like some french they mention once or twice in there but it's usually between those two languages and then you know kind of the meanings you can derive by basically translating between the two and like for ando it's basically his obsession it's how he has fun with the language to like you said to to the bane of everyone and around him even his english teacher um but it does it does come around because then he has that whole moment where you know they mention Schrodinger's cat three times in the damn show, like just kind of as a reference, I suppose. And then all of a sudden they they use it as like the trivia question to win a free car at the water park. Which, whoa, does that occur in Japan? Because I need to get me to like a water park, <laughs> <laughs> you know, post post Panini. Uh, to mention, uh, yeah, because we we, 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 we we wanted to mention the girls. There was like the, we mentioned Sayumi. We we yeah, we, 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 we mentioned Chifuyu. Uh, so, then there uh, then time for our top two contenders. The the actual brawlers of the show are uh, Ray and Asuka, as it would. Uh, in, in one in in one corner we have the what? childhood friend. The in the other corner we have the girl with a mysterious secret connection to the main character. Fight. <laughs> the- nerd girl we have a girl who is just as much of an otaku but for some reason can't seem to chill like at all like not even when free cake is on the line like come on like anyone can just pretend to just be someone's girlfriend for some free cake like it's not hard (laughs) uh no, and it, My, yeah, uh, I, I, the, I know that the uh, the light novel did end. Wait, wait, it, it is sucky that uh, the light novel never actually got adapted in English, so it's like there is no real way to like read to like to read it. So like I haven't really gone through and like looked and see like oh how did the series end or but it's like if it's like okay yeah, to Tomio Tomio probably it, Tomio probably won out in this because it's like oh she yeah, she she is the quote unquote main girl of like she 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 is the poster child. She's the one that gets the most screen time. It's like yeah she. 
she's pro and she has that like that she has that because it's revealed she has that 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 whole chunubio chunubio connection because like oh she she was also like a crazy chunubi chunubio and she she accidentally convinces him to kind of like continue on and because he originally he was going to be like oh like that's all that's all kid stuff i'm gonna give up on it and she like basically just, just by seeing her like act her way like hacked on her own way he decides oh i'm gonna keep doing that unaware that she also ends up she ends up giving up herself which is such a the fact that there's this twist in the show and it's so subdued it's in the middle of like one episode and it's never touched or like built up like the char characters never have like a conversation where like they have that revelation and they like discuss the input like no it just we as the audience see it and that's it and so i mean it kind of is sort of built into the whole light novel adaptation, um, which, you know, that's kind of cute, too, that the show also is themed into light novels. Like, it's not just language. It's about writing. Uh, Tomoyo, her whole uh, her whole plotline is that she wants to be that light novel uh, writer, she, how she's entering the contest, and she wants to get past, you know, the first round, and she manages to, but, uh, again, she just probably needs to chill, and then maybe she would be able to get her books approved uh, better. You know, not narc on other people being nerdy when you yourself can't even write your own book without their help it's like mm, you may want to have some self-evaluation there it's called <laughs> sundere soon it's yes it's exactly uh, what it is but then you have then you have a uh, hotako hotako which, which and wait i feel like her because i didn't even realize that because i want i watched it after like i it wasn't until very recently where i was just kind of re-watching clips that i realized that her big freak out actually is like a vi like it actually kind of went viral. Like I was looking, I was watching the clip. Not only does it have like so many thousands of views, but there was like even recent comments of people like discovering it for oh, the wow. first time. And I'm like, oh damn, I didn't realize like <laughs> I didn't realize that moment was like that popular because it was like when I saw yeah. when I saw it like when I saw that scene for the first time, I was like, huh. I didn't really think much of it, but then you know, like so many people just kind of like exploded of that. Holy shit, this girl went off. Well, she's the she's probably the the more complicated character in this little show here um because like at first you know first appearances she kind of gives uh when we get to little witch academia she gives yasmina vibes uh that whole mm -hmm, so smiley i'm just a nice sweet girl there there's no problems in this head which um you know our antagonist who ends up not being our antagonist because nothing happens because i guess they were saving him for another season that never happened but um no there's a line mentioned where there's no such thing as someone who feels no stress or concern which i thought was a really cool line to kind of like break down those delusions that ando had of like how he judges people and stuff uh but you know she has that whole appearance that she's just the sweet girl that nothing bothers her and then they throw in you know the character aspect that you know she, she's been with ando the longest that she's dealt with his zany bullshit the longest um but she understands none of it she puts up with it and she tolerates it but in terms of like indulging in it in being a part of it it's she's she has all 10 toes firmly in reality uh when ando tries to recommend light novels and stuff he, he he gets her stuff that's a little too complicated in terms of like the language again going into how you know there's a lot of media out there that does incorporate multiple languages and then the meanings that can be like created from combining those multiple languages uh and yeah and it's just super cool that you have this character then eventually bubble over and express to uh to the to the protagonist, but also to a lot of people that obsess over you like certain medias and stuff that, you know, one part of really being able to enjoy it, being able to enjoy it with others is you need to be able to explain, you need to be able to articulate what about it you enjoy, what about it that connects you to it and it to them and that that is the gate to help people like also enjoy it. That if you just kind of keep yourself in the delusion and you don't try to you know at least atone to like a similar wavelength to other people you know have that compromise of communication where you give a little they give a little but if you just stay firmly intact in it you're going to upset people there's people that just are not going to be able to understand and i think it's a really cool scene that was animated with that frustration that you know she appreciates him as a person like she wouldn't be making him food literally every day if she didn't like truly care for him 
but he has an issue of not communicating, of not, you know, expressing the true meanings of the words, but instead giving the, you know, the Armageddon Lucifer. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny halfway through it. It kind of sounds like the lyrics to a, an Utna battle song, just random fucking words. And she's acting like she doesn't know what they all mean, but, you know, she internalized them. So some of it stuck to her. Um, but I thought that was kind of, I thought it was a really interesting scene altogether. Yeah, that, that is that whole scene with that scene. She, yeah, she like goes off on like just this long list of, of words that she doesn't understand and doesn't know. But it's like, oh, but she she remember she remembered what those words are, even though it's just me. Which is yeah, that that that, that just like that, that just really like emphasized like yeah, how much how much she cares about him. That it's like she that she does remember those words, even though she has no idea what they mean because she wants to know what they mean. But it's like he doesn't explain it, and the whole time he just has this stupid like wide eyed face with his is holding his phone with his hand like to the phone as he's just staring at her and I'm just like motherfucker just put your phone down and listen to her because it's like you see it's like he's half listening to her vent the whole time and when she leaves he's just like wait what happened what and I'm like god <laughs> you're an idiot right so that's where you know kind of I started to develop the theory it's like oh maybe the uh supernatural battles are just you know arguments are just miscommunications because there are physical altercations in this show yes in the first episode you know you have chifuyo and uh hadako basically you know someone who can create infinite many things creating a shield that can uh, against an attack that's infinitely attacking so you know you have infinite spear and infinite shield basically uh and and that's kind of a cute and that's the thing is that it's kind of sets the bar for that okay they're gonna at least attempt to use their powers you're gonna at least see you know maybe some high school shenanigans or something but then you know you have the whole miscommunication with uh mirai and then no then it turns into again dating sim uh endings you know you gotta see all the girls lies get see behind the curtains with every girl and you would think at least you know oh are we gonna see how they're adapting to using their powers and you don't you get one super quick fight with sayumi and ando about you know their ideals on basically the nature of powers the show tries to have that be another discussion where you know it's basically ando's philosophy of what powers should be as this you know pure cool aesthetic driven thing like powers just merely exist to be cool to him at versus you know versus the other students actually trying to think logically on it like oh my god what are the implications of this like how am i going to interact with other people where am i going to stay stuff like that um and so he has one quick fight with sayumi and she takes him down like judo style it's hilarious but unfortunately his ideals win out and then after that there's nothing that's that's i think think is like the big thing that kind of racks my brain with the series that i feel like they either should have leaned in more into the supernatural elements and like have the those powers be more like either about in the stories or in like like in, yeah, in the stories in these characters lives have that be a more like a greater aspect or just make it just a straight slice of life series about this literature club and this crazy chinibio that drives them all crazy i feel like if they did one or the other i think would have elevated this series much more just because i feel like yeah the, the supernatural elements they're there but they're not but they're not there for a long time that it feels like well, why are they there in the first place? And when they are there, it's like, oh, these would be cool, but there aren't there enough to kind of, they, they aren't there enough. So the slice of life elements that say like the, I, I as a slice of life fan enjoy aren't like given as much focus as maybe they could have in order to flesh it out. And some of the, and some of the, the, the slice of life stuff is just so vanilla. Like, I don't want to be yeah. like, you know, er, edgy the hedgy, but it's like, if you're not going to delve into, oh, hey, these people are going to have to deal with emotional problems with having powers. Instead, you want to focus on, well, they, they're going to deal with a real life situation. All their real life situations are just kind of bland. Like, it's not any deeper. Like, I was, like, just not to be a jerk, but I was fully expecting Shifuyu to be getting bullied or something. I was expecting, like, a life problem i was not expecting just you know obligations and pressures it was like well that's just being alive sweetheart like if anything use your infinite manifesting powers to deal with it like work be creative it's, it's kind of just sort of that it's like the show could have 
use a big push on that. But I'm sure it, it, that's also just really tied to it. You know, it's an adaptation. It's got to stick to how what the source material was. And I'm most uh, light novels don't have that trigger plot curve in mind where it can just you know explode at the end. Instead, it's just it, it, things continue to be revealed throughout the show. Um, there is a twist. So. Are, are well, we well, get- yeah, the, yeah, that, that that was what I was gonna, yeah, that was what I was gonna go into. But it's like, yeah, like, just just to, to jump off what you were, what what you were saying was that, yeah, that I, I enjoyed how like that that it became a slice of life, mostly because I do like, yeah, like, like you mentioned, like we mentioned at the beginning, I love slice of life series. There's harems, like 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 even like the trashiest of trashy harem stuff, I am all for just because it's like I just love like just those simple wow. setups and like stuff like e- even the worst of the worst. I'm just like, yes, give me give me my garbage. <laughs> I just enjoy, it. and then like and. Then, like because like a good slice of life is like can be like fucking amazing that's like the, this one ends up being kind of like like i i really enjoy it because i love that genre but it's like even this one just kind of like in the middle yeah because like you said it's like so vanilla and it's like even because like there are like regular like, like we mentioned quintessential quintuplets which is just like a really good like character piece romance story you get like my teen romantic comedy snafu which goes really deep into kind of like like the themes and ethics about growing up you got stuff like uh nisekoi and we never learn which are just really goofy funny uh like just adventure stuff even closer to supernatural slice of life stuff they um I mean, it's kind of like puddle level stuff, but Haruhi Suzumiya, I mean, uh, it's kind of one thing that is nicely clever about the show, how we've been talking about how it's about writing and communication. The fact that they're actually in the literature club matters in this show because it rarely matters. I think sometimes they use literature club or like uh, supernatural club as the, you know, the default anime club because those are meant to be like low you know uh low intensity activities like you can say everyone's just hanging out and reading when they're just you know hanging out versus you know if you're in the soccer club if you're not all out there running around chasing a ball the the teachers are gonna get suspicious so i like how in this show being in a literature club like affected actually the characters yeah and 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 to go into the other one thing about the story that I I, I I don't know how I, th- I feel like well it, it's a it's a plot element that probably works better in the light novel because the light novel goes on for much longer so they're able to actually delve into it while in here it feels kind of it feels kind of tacked on in such a weird way but in some way so it's both a negative but I also kind of like the idea which is that so just li- like a lot of tri- like most other trigger series two thirds of the way through they th- they throw a plot twist that completely throws a wrench into the entire like everything you thought you knew about the series just kind of changes the only thing is in this show the wrench is made out of wood and the gears just snap it in half and keep going it's like well that was fun but not this show the idea which is that basically the supernatural battle series that you think this is going to be is happening in the background of the main series like that basically like uh, that tomio's uh, brother also developed powers and that you learn that there is this thing called a fairy war going on and that fairies basically gave a whole bunch of people on earth powers with this whole idea of like just watching them do like whatever they want with their powers and seeing which eight people come out of it in the end and whoever eight comes out they'll they'll get they'll get their wish granted or something like that and so you have like his brother like her brother kind of gets his own like like band of group of people with their own powers together and they're like tracking down like an evil organization like the episode has like them like get, get infiltrating a building where they rescue like this this like weird experiment girl that ends up joining their group it's like it's a lot of stuff where it's like it makes you feel like oh you're just what you're watching like a middle episode of these characters adventures and it's like they don't really explain much and i kind of like that just because it's like oh yeah the that the the, 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 the the big the big kind of quote unquote end of the world plot is going on behind like the characters which is they're like oh they're 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 just doing wacky school stuff and it's like oh then there's like shit going on that they have no idea about and then it ends up bleeding into their lives in the final episode but they're still kind of like they never actually know exactly what's going on they're completely ignorant the whole time like yeah they throw the twist of the fairy run battle royale death sport with supernatural people and it's completely dropped. You have the other team of other supernatural people who show up in the whole trigger opening looking like, you know, the student council, like these are your big bads. And then you have the whole situation in the middle of the show where, you know, 
Hatako had her big blow up and she decided to just leave and she walks and she gets kidnapped essentially. And then we get a really neat moment in the show again. Uh, I like this as probably it's probably another language writing joke, but um, all the powers have the ability to evolve. Their, their original powers are just the first form. They can level them up. And Sayumi, I love that she decides to use her whole, uh, so her healing power is very much like a Excel war. It's more of, she's restoring it to its original state, not necessarily healing it. It's basically, it's so, basically like, it's like Eerie's Rewind, rew- it's exactly like Eerie's Rewind in My Hero. Exactly. Uh, but I love how she has to do a whole, like, little lawyer moment where she's like, okay, everyone sit around in the club, time to call, call a club meeting. Oh no, someone's missing, the club is not in its original state, and she uses that to then allow her powers to bring and teleport Hadako because it would restore the club to its original state of having all the members. It's like, well, there you go. I I mean, I kind of wanted a clever use of power, and there it was, right in the middle of the show. But after that, the whole uh, rival team, they're gone. No mas. I also, I also think, I think it's a genuinely funny twist, yeah, because she, she gets kidnapped at the end of one episode, so you're like, oh no, what are they going to do? And then the next episode's reveal, like, oh no, the brother was just a dumbass and had his contacts in, so his eyes were hurt. So he's like, oh, I know, I'll go and get the girl that can rewind, uh, the rewind the body parts to fix me. That'd be no problem. And then they end up kidnapping the wrong girl, and they're like, shit, what do we do? And then she disappears, and they're like, ah, uh, and welp, oh well. <laughs> And I feel like it kind of plays on the whole trigger expectations, even though this is like very early. But, you know, the, the whole plot progression was, you know, more uh, Gynex had used it as well. So it'd been around. Um, so I feel like expectations are kind of played up there as well to where you think that, you know, when the antagonist team shows up, you think the show's going to have a, a turn that like, all right, the now the next four episodes are completely different. But no. The next two episodes are date episodes, and it's like, oh, no, we're, we're going right back. So that's what I meant by, like, that wrench was wooden. It tried to <laughs> change the way the show was going to run, but the show show begged to differ. It was like, no, we uh, we need our date funsies. <laughs> and again, it feels very clear that, oh, yeah, I mean, like, the, the, the light novel, I think, went on for, like, 14, 14 volumes. So it's like, oh, yeah, that, that, that that's something that very clearly they delved more and more into in future volumes, and then probably in the final one had, like, some actual confrontation. Again, I have no idea how the series actually ended, but it's like, yeah, like it feels. I like mean, we can only hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in our fanfic, all of the kids live happily ever after, just mistranslating to each other. <laughs> It, it, it better have ended because I mean because the whole like the, you could, I do like there is like this this whole thing because I mean, they have like the like they they have like the fairy that's kind of watching over them and there, there's like the girl like the main oh, the, girl the whole bravely default fairy where you like you just want to smash it with the yeah. book <laughs> yeah like yeah even they're all annoyed with they her with her and then you, you have like the girl and it's like oh like the girl has feelings for the guy too and like they kind of like they, they they like tease like oh that there's there was like a romance going on that we didn't see but it's like it make it's written in such a way where it's like oh they 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 think that you like that you've seen this series that doesn't exist. So it's like so, they so, wrote so, eight yeah. whole ass protagonists and put them in one episode. Like it's one of the thing, and I'm sure that's probably highly on a credit to again probably maybe the original light novel. But it's insane because it's a whole fully developed team of characters with dynamics. With you see one of them a, is a hashtag gamer, and so it's like oh shit, it, and then they're gone. And then it doesn't matter because the last fight is just Ando exploiting the fact that his power is hella useless. And even then, well, there is kind of a confusing thing because yeah, the whole the whole thing is that yeah, his power levels up, but the level up is basically just that the fire can't go out. So it's like and it it's, hurts himself. Yeah, I, I think that's also his original. Yeah, and that, 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 is, that is something that's like, yeah, because it's like introduced, like, I think like maybe like a little, like about, I don't know, it's around the time, yeah, that I think Hatago comes back, that, that she, that he his power evolves, but they kind of cut away and they imply that, oh, something is up with his power, so they're like, don't use it anymore, so they, that, 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 that is kind of like the mystery, and then the final episode when they're fighting against like a, uh, a, a, a like a, an evil power user that can take over bodies, so they take over uh, uh, Mirai's body, so it's like, oh, they have, she, she steals 
kills uh, two of their powers, so it's like, oh, how do we get it back? How do we defeat her? And he decides that, oh, I'm going to trick her into stealing my power because, oh, she, like, she, the, the, my, the, the, you, you can't get rid of it. So it's like, oh, she, she has the power, like, she has, like, the fire that, like, constantly, constantly burns. So it's like, oh, the, so it's like, oh, we, they end up scaring her off back into her body. And the way they, the way they fix it is having them literally slice off their arms and then having the, the, the other girl's power br- bring their arms back to life. And it's like, holy shit. And they do that. Can- so canonically, like- canonically, Chifuyu knows what a guillotine is. He straight <laughs> up asks her, and this small child is like, yeah, I've seen one of those. I can make you one in a snap. It's like, damn, girl is dark. Ondo has had his hand cut off twice now. It's a lot. And, and- hey, kind of going back to the whole communication thing. I, Because, you know, I was thinking halfway through, it's like, you know, maybe I'm just making like a headcanon. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. But the thing is, in the last episode, before the final confrontation, Ando's plan is simply plain and true. I'm going to call her and I'm going to ask her. The solution before the final battle was plain and simple clear communication. <laughs> it was just using words as they were intended. And he was able to, you know develop a plan so that's when i was like okay maybe it, it maybe it is there maybe i'm not reading too much into it <laughs> and there is a weird thing where like in the vit like the last scene of the uh, the last scene of the series where he's just kind of chatting with jifuyu and he like pulls out his fire again and then puts it away and i'm like wait so you can put it away it's like i don't know if that was just a thing that they did for like a gag or if like oh no he can control his power now it's like it, it's such a weird like it was it's was a weird uh like addition that kind of like dude, makes everything confusing to me slightly dude half of the interactions between ando and chifuyu made no sense like the whole is curry a drink or a snack like i was like girl you lost me like <laughs> I, I have no clue but you know that's what makes all the characters you know, nice and cute, and I'm sure they're way more charming in the no- light novels. It's just in this actual, just like twelve episode show, is you know, you you just get exposed to these girls, and they, you know, they appear, they do their do, and then they leave, and they leave without showing off their power. So you're left with like even more just emptiness than the usual. Like, wait, I didn't get any like character out of you. It's like, yeah, you also didn't get any powers out of them. So <laughs> here we are. Oh yeah, and, and, and like, yeah, like you mentioned, you you, you, you men- briefly mentioned him. Like the the closest to an antagonist is like is uh, uh, Ando's rival, who's like he's introduced in like one of the first episodes. Is like oh he he he's also like kind of have like he's like he's not a chuny, but he's like a nerd. He's like he has his own like kind of nerd thing, and they both kind of have this. They have this like little rivalry. That rivalry. Then it's like oh he he's like he's like. He's like poking in with the girl's love life and trying to like, uh, like get get them to kind of like go together with Ando and something. And then it's like because he's bored, he, then he ends up like bringing the like the 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 body the body snatching girl over basically just for lulls. And then when he's bored, he then goes and gets uh, Tomio's brother and to like get rid of her once everything's done. So it's like this weird thing of like yeah again he's probably like the closest to like a probably in the light novel a a an, an antagonist because he's like oh he he's doing like these weird scum things but it's like in the context of the anime he's just kind of like in and out so much that it's just kind of like what's your deal are you just are you just being a dick just to be a dick or is there an actual plan because it doesn't feel like he has a plan right but i mean we we did talk just kind of how how the show is in and of itself and just how there is sort of a disconnect between this show and like other trigger stuff but the, i mean you can see certain things how you mentioned certain character designs we'll see coming back later in like trigger originals um i also feel like this also kind of gives us a good cue on like how trigger would later develop and work on doing um entourage style casts i mean kill a kill it y- you kind of have you know ryoku as the main character and then you know there's the supporting cast uh versus you know supernatural battle here you have the whole team of characters and then you know we'll see in later uh trigger shows you know little witch takes place in a school with little girl clicks and then kids niver is basically all about relationships when they start <laughs> when we get to that uh, but you know you kind of see just sort of different plays on dynamics between characters that you know um if not just because all relationships are probably familiar to each other but at least you start to see how some stuff may have started being developed uh, within the staff by working on this show 
and being carried on to later stuff. It's also because like that, that that's how that's how that's how most like harem slice of life are kind of structured because it's like oh you have the main character who is like oh like he's like the focal point but because like oh the main character is supposed to be a bridge for the audience so that all of the girls can like fall for them so the girls all get like quote unquote they get the most personality like overall while like the main character doesn't feel as much so it's like even though he's the main character the other ones feel more important and like and they're also the poster child so the poster like children for the series so it's like oh like, it feels the credit feels... is nothing but shots of them in bikinis i was yeah. like really it's gonna be just it's it, all right you're gonna end it with a gotcha gotcha cool <laughs> yeah, it's always yeah, it's always the same thing of like yeah, Ando is technically he is would be the main character, but it's like oh, like the the girls also are the ones that get the most like amount of attention, so it's like oh, they feel they feel just as important, so it makes it feel more of an ensemble overall. I still can't believe that every single one of those girls confused his obsession with their powers as like a uh, concern or affection. It was like no, ladies. He's just a stupid nerd who loves your powers. Like, I could not believe they had that whole line where they were like, he does care about us, though. It's like, no, he doesn't. Uh, I just, it's kind of, like I said, the whole harem structure format. It's like, these women are too good for for Pants McGee and his shallow milk toast personality. Like, even if you throw in, like, fantasy delusion, it doesn't, doesn't actually make it better. <laughs> Yeah, that, 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 that's why I feel like I feel like Tomio works the most just because she has she has that like she has that much more deeper connection, and I feel like even they have the something series, in common, like actual relationship stuff. And I feel like even the series itself knows that because like they do, they have there's a lot more scenes of them just kind of like being more casual, casually chilling together, and even like he kind of like even he has these kind of moments of oh maybe I do have like more feelings toward her, while everyone else is just kind of like oh being friendly and all that kind of stuff which is why like, yeah like if they, it feels like that like at, at least on that like that level it's like oh that I, I i do like how like their their relationship is portrayed is there anything else is there any other point because i think I, w- I went through all of my points regarding uh the series yeah that was about it um it was neat to see the life fiber show up in that one scene uh that will carry over even just later in on this conversation where, where, where were the life because I, I i i don't remember the life fibers showing up in it's like episode one episode two i don't even remember i think it's tomoyo she it's a gag where she like punches him and it's you know big boxing glove shaped like oh the, right okay I, I remember effect. that yeah that, 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 that was in the episode when they when they're all giving her the cold shoulder because of the because the whole mirai stuff right and, and and also and also mako mako shows up oh the best character the old the, yeah even yep. if she's not technically a character in the show she's still the best character yeah we, yeah there, there is there, there there was a cameo of mako in one of the pool episodes and the moment i saw that i was like oh my god I did the same thing. I had to like stop and rewind because like there's yes, there is a way. <laughs> it, it made watching the whole show actually worth it. it just, there, there is a way to connect you. this into the the trigger multiverse, which we will discuss at the end of this video. <laughs> oh goodness, that's gonna have to be its own whole ass video, yeah. won't it? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Overall, I feel like again, I, I think if you enjoy harem slice of life series then i'd say this is one they'd be like oh i think you could check it you could check it out and you might like you might have some and like enjoy like you're the, i feel yeah if you enjoy like if you like casually enjoy slice of life and harem stuff then i think like you you it is worth checking out just to be like oh seeing how this does but if you are if you aren't really a fan of those type of series i'd say i don't blame you for not checking out because yeah because it really is just it has like some interesting things to kind of spice it up but for the most part it is very much a vanilla harem slice of life so it's like if, if you don't if if that doesn't appeal to you a lot then uh, i don't think there's going to be enough in this at least in the yeah, in this anime that will like pull you and intrigue you a lot yeah if you don't like physically laugh at japanese puns this might not be the show for you if you know like that is your type deal like you like yourself a good mistranslated pun you know misread kanji every like then yeah then then this show has some humor predicated on that but like if you're looking for teens with powers fighting like i know i brought it up like jokey but like just go watch some my hero academia there's a whole classroom plus of children with powers and using them every episode like (laughs) 
they're not like trying to kill each other for a fairy war but then again like the fairy war doesn't mean anything within the show itself anywho so it's kind of fine just gutting it out really <laughs> all right now let, let let's let's go jump back a bit to triggers origins where in in late 2012 they released their first official project online for free so you you can you can watch this on youtube officially so it's like it's all good it is inferno cop show two <laughs> all right what the fuck i let's let's start with this that's my review that's my review what the fuck and we leave that's it that's all you need to say i mean that was your thread that was your post that was everything and you know academics across the globe cannot argue I mean, I've cited your review at least three times already, so we're good. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you. I, I watched this for the first. Yeah, I watched this for the first time with you, so you got to hear my first reactions of just being like, "What?" Uh, it is like it, it is. You know, there's always like the term of like, "Oh, this type of series gone wrong." This is an Adult Swim series gone absolutely right. This is like the best, this is the absolute best thing, best shit post that Adult Swim has <laughs> never made. And they probably won't make because no one can perfect a shit post as beautiful as Inferno Cop. And it like, is I'm like, honestly surprised that Adult Swim hasn't done like an Inferno Cop marathon for one of their April Fool's things. Like, I mean, it, that's also my sneak way to be like, make an Inferno Cop dub, please. We need it. <laughs> well, t- well, technically, well, well, they don't because they have Axe Cop, and Axe Cop is kind of like Axe Cop is kind of like I think they, they, they've aired that, and the Axe Cop is kind of like that weird Inferno Cop esque type thing that because because yeah, the, the Axe Cop's whole kind of gag was that oh it was written by a child, so it's like oh you have this no. like these crazy over the top like nonsense plots being animated, but Inferno Cop Inferno Technic- Cop feels I don't know the term like, technically everything's written by a child it just matters on how we mature <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know the term but it's like Inferno Cop is it. It, it was it's as if every episode was written by a different person but the all the only thing that the people that the person knew about was the end of the last episode so it's like everything like every episode goes into a completely different direction like there is no there is no plot like there is a plot but the hey plot now. doesn't matter <laughs> that, that that's very very true um, but it is it is another uh, Imaishi show, so you know you're gonna have themes of love, of perseverance, and of <laughs> never giving up. Or in the case of uh, Inferno Cop, of justice. Justice. As well. uh, we love justice here on this podcast. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I go watch Inferno Cop. Let's start with that. I mean, the episodes, it, it, the format's a little different than, you know, the typical anime because, like you said, it's more of a shit post show. So the episodes are only three minutes. It's basically like watching a bumper and you get a whole show episode that's animated uh, to the, you know, to the caliber and quality of putting puppets on popsicle sticks and waving them around. But damn it, it you can't beat that budget, can you? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 uh, there there is no bud. Like the, the budget of this series was there was none. Like yeah, 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 yeah. There is no there. There is yeah. Every character is just in one. Like there is one drawing of the character, and that's like they they never move. They like they move, but they like they never they never never change. They never change. There's never any facial differences. Like there there's no like if if, if a character needs to fly, they'll they'll turn they'll turn on an angle and zoom up in the air. If, if a character is sitting down in like a weird position, then there there will always be sitting down in that weird position. <laughs> the the Sakuga is top tier here like if you we've never seen inferno cop move out of his singular pose but we've seen the man jump flail time travel because there's dinosaurs in this show oh are there dinosaurs um at one point he turns into a car and then he spends the next four or so episodes still in a car even in moments where it makes no sense for him to be in a car i mean the only logical argument for any time a anime character turns into a car is that the director must have saw Utna, uh, the movie, and kind of in that sense, she turns into a car to be the vehicle of Anthe's escape, yada, yada, yada. But I, <laughs> at least that's what was going through my mind the whole time he's a car. It's like, all right, you know, I've seen it too. I, I saw her turn into a pink car and drive away. 
Uh, but no, so with the shorter episode structures, like you said, basically each plot, each episode very self-contained in, they'll introduce a monster, the monster will blow up, and then we're going to go into the next episode. And then, you know, there's even mid-credit little scenes where some of these monsters that showed up for five seconds get, you know, five seconds more of lore about their character and about what they like. Um, but the show is just so great. It starts off with such a bang just you, you have the whole first joke with like all of the the thugs trying to attack the lady and then the lady spontaneously gives birth to an ocean <laughs> and then there's a monster baby that's bulletproof but so is inferno cop but so is the baby <laughs> the, the absolute <laughs> best joke that has ever been told and like i honestly it was like a few weeks ago i was just sleeping in bed and I thought of that joke, and I started laughing for three minutes. I couldn't fall back asleep. I was just, oh, at least I've got my, I've got my gun. You fool! I am bulletproof. So am I, Nani. Nani. <laughs> it's, like... it's the most best timing ever. And I, That's somebody sad. on Twitter made that and like reanimated it with King Kong and Godzilla. And oh, you like... could, you can reanimate it to so many things. Like I'm surprised it's not like heavily memified to this day. But like you go from that, and then you go into your your patented, you know, 2010 Ace Attorney decade reference episode where you guilty, know, not guilty, not guilty. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> best, the judge the works judge. exactly like a video game judge. Well, they, they they use that joke again. They they do it with a uh, fucking later on where it's like you're under arrest. You're free to go. Like that's yeah yeah, they, they, like yeah, they, 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 they end up yeah they end up reusing that joke in Luluco later. But it's like yeah. it's so it's so stu- it's so stupid but works so well. Yeah, and then you get yeah, then a- you get shit then you get shit like like what like uh like, then, like then you get shit like Hellfire Boy. Whose whole existence yes. just had me screaming. It's just, it's, oh, you, what did you do? He's just there to be a character to appear and then leave so that he can motivate Inferno Cop. And it's. <laughs> and he turns into a no slice of. Sense. He turns into a slice of bread. I. I he does. Yeah, I guess. Dude, I, I should have, like, literally bullet pointed each plot point because half of this is you could be bullshitting me and I'd still be like, yes, I do remember. We were there together. We watched this together. Well, because the whole thing was like, I mean, the whole setup is that, oh, he's going to avenge, he's going to avenge his, uh, avenge oh, yeah, his and dead wife and stuff like that. Plot, and then, like, yeah, and by FYI. the end of it, it's like, they completely, no. And then in, like, the, the penultimate episode, he remembers, oh, yeah, I have to avenge them. And then the final episode, completely forget about it again. Okay, so yeah, but yeah, so so the show starts with it makes no sense, and it keeps not making sense for a while, and you're like, okay, we're having a ha ha laugh. It's, you know, fuck, twelve ounce mouse did a whole thing where none of the episodes make fucking sense, and yet apparently there's a whole like hidden plot. Um, I'm not saying that like it's an inspired thing, but those are you know kind of going into the whole adult swim. Like yeah, the Aqua Teen Hunger Force kind of similarities there but i also see like i said a 12 ounce mouse like type similarity uh to at least the episode structure until we get to the point where trigger remembers that oh shit we used to work at gynex like let's fucking throw the instrumentality into our plot and what becomes happens? evangelion and it's then like... Evangelion happens. All right, the angels show up. The font shows up. The fucking title scenes show up. Uh, like, I mean, it's not the first time that Gynex has done like heavy references onto Evangelion, even to like instrumentality in general. You know, aside from us, like, haha, it, they're reusing that plot point again. But like, no, no, this is literally instrumentality in the sky. And then we find out that pregnant lady from the first episode who gave birth to the monster, surprise, this actually isn't us talking about Inferno Cop. It's actually me and Stefan's opportunity to talk about WandaVision, WandaVision. That that was the the biggest what the fuck. Yeah, because WandaVision was going on at the same time we watched it. And then she suddenly turns into the Scarlet, like literal Scarlet Witch costume. And it becomes House House of M outfit like we're not talking just like oh looks like the scar no she turns into wanda and 
and the plot becomes House of M. Yeah, and it's like, what? We both literally said, what? <laughs> no fucking way. And it's like, yeah, and then it becomes, yeah, she she, re- she ends up rewriting all of reality. And it's because like, Because she wants oh everyone God. to be Inferno Cop because she loved the fact <laughs> yeah. that Inferno Cop saved her so much. Uh, that she is willing to completely rewrite reality to make everyone be Inferno Cop, and which is the plot of crazy WandaVision. Because I, I had watched Inferno Cop before, but I had completely forgotten that they do this whole. Because ha- you know, given the time period, it's a House of M reference pre WandaVision. But it was insane watching the show again in twenty twenty one and be like, "Oh my god, the streams are crossing! The streams are crossing!" And then everything uh, turns to white, just like in the series. And it's just, oh god, we got to go back to hell. We got to go back right. to hell to find ourselves. <laughs> Which again, not going to be the last time we do that. Even just <laughs> this conversation, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 get to that. We'll get to that later. We're getting yeah. there, but yeah. So I actually highly recommend, like, even if you've already seen Inferno Cop, if you haven't seen it in like the last two years, watch it now. Like, watch it with like you know the whole social, the fact that now culturally, you know, the concepts of House of M of like Wanda's reality, like completely rewriting abilities to, you know, help herself emotionally. The fact that that's now a thing that common culture now knows. Watch Inferno Cop. It's so funny to see them use that whole same reference right at the very end. It's a pretty good effect. Like, I mean, it, it's a quick twist, but it's at the point where the insanity of Inferno Cop has already been at 11. Like, you're, you're you basically you fully accept it. It fully works in, uh, you know, Inferno Cop through the powers of justice and Imaishi, uh, hopefulness and drive, you know, overcomes and bops her in the face and justice is served. But I, <laughs> to me, I thought it was a nice little wrinkle in, uh, in the simulation when <laughs> the Scarlet Witch showed up in my anime. <laughs> And it's like, is this even, an- like, at this point, is like, I mean, it, it is anime because, I mean, it was produced in Japan and all that stuff, but it's like, you see how it's moved, and it's like, it like, is this anime? Does this count? And it's like, technically, I mean, yeah, like, if, if this counts as anime, anything can be. Whoa, bro, we are, we're not getting into sandwich politics here, okay? Like, you know, a Pop-Tart is a sandwich, Inferno Cop's an anime, it, it happens. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and even then, and also just, just to appreciate just, it, it, it's, shit postness of just it it, is, it does everything absolutely perfectly you want in something that does not give a fuck but you and enj- but you love because it does not give a fuck and you can be done with it in like less than two hours so you can take a bathroom break you can get snacks and you'll still finish it in like two hours no well no the whole thing is like 20 minutes like yeah because it's it's three it's 13 it's three 13 minute uh yeah, yeah no it's 13 three minute episodes which there's all the, the math yeah all of that together yeah it's like about 20 to 30 minutes like it, it's a inferno cop is about the length of like one episode of a series and i feel like like i my my one disappointment is that i wish uh yeah because it, it's uploaded on on anime banco's website and i wish that they released a version where it's just all the episodes all in one go because it was like yeah because we were watching it like like in we going from blank like going from episode to episode they have credits and before and afterwards it's like oh the the the, 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 the credit song is amazing but it's also like i kind of wish it was just one long flow like i just love to watch nah. it just one long flow without those pauses and stuff <laughs> so what you're looking for is the official inferno cop inferno cop long play no yes, glitches 100 percent gotcha cool i mean i understand because when we were watching it as well because there wasn't just like because i don't mind i'm one of those people that i'll watch the credit opening every time i've seen hundreds of openings of one piece it's just something i've accepted in my life but um when you watch the inferno cop upload uh you know you have all the interludes of the ads for like the soundtrack and for some of the other stuff i mean it's kind of nice you know you always like to see who are the grand the sponsor but yeah it'd be it'd be kind of nice if they pulled a whole whole uh inferno cop kai turned the 20 minute runtime into a nice good 15 minute of just 
original animation and a, an original pose shaking. Oh, there, 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 there is a great, there is like a legitimate, because yeah, even you mentioned when we were watching, was that there, there is like an amazing joke that you could only do in this online format, which is that, oh, the final episode is like 14 minutes long. So you're like, ooh, an extra long episode. Yes. Nice. And then you watch it. you with the runtime. And it's only three minutes and the rest of the 10 minutes are just super, super slow credits. And it's like, holy <laughs> shit. Bro, Don't fucking fall bubble. apart. Sleep with your heart. <laughs> it, 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 I I loved that joke. I because I got gooped because at first I was like, wait, because I had because again I had forgotten that House of M shows up right the fuck out of nowhere. So I was fully prepared, being like, maybe I don't remember the ending of Inferno Cop. Like I must have trauma blocked it out. So I was so ready for the episode to like astound me. And it's like, oh no, no, they just got me. I got got. Yeah. So yeah. Well, watch Inferno Cop. You 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 just 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 do it. It's like yeah, there, so there isn't much else to say. Friends, Just get your friends. Get your parents. Like get your, parents. get your dog. Get your pet iguana and sit them down to to watch some Inferno Cop. You you you'll all be able to understand it exactly as well. <laughs> no, but if if somebody's if somebody says what what, what if this, if somebody can't like even if even if you don't if you don't understand the language like like even if you like just turn off the subtitles and just watch it as is you'll get as equal amount as enjoyment. <laughs> If you understand how guns work and you understand how cars work, you'll understand how Inferno Cop works. Like it's a, it's a, it's a visual media. It's it's amazingly painstakingly animated. Show don't tell. <laughs> As Inferno Cop shakes around, I know if I shoot somebody and it ricochets off somebody, but then it ricochets off me. If it hits them again, it'll explode. Well, that's just Final Fantasy logic, actually. <laughs> All right, ne- next uh, next project we're going to talk about was it, 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 it's it's a, it's a much more interesting, weirder project overall. This was something that was released again in 2013, in between Infernal Cop and before Kill a Kill started. It was a seven episode, uh, again uh, th- like three minute, three to four minute uh, online short series called Turning Girls. Woo, turning girls. Which is ba- which is uh, it, it was a it was like a little project that was made entirely by the female staff at Trigger as basically just a little project for some to do, probably while they were still developing Kill a Kill. So what you're saying, all the talent is what you meant. <laughs> the, my my the thing was that yeah, because not only yeah, cause nobody yeah, I mean, Turning Girls doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. It's like I never see I never seen anything about it before. So I was like I had no idea what to expect going in, other than I just knew that. That, again, it was a it was a, another uh, online project thing, kind of in the, in the vein of Inferno Cop. But what I was surprised is that it was it was again kind of like Supernatural Battles. It, it's a slice of life series, only it's it's triggered it's triggered doing a pure slice of life series all on their own ab- about adult women. And I was just like, holy shit, why isn't it? This is a full series, like just just those little b- like little like brief snippets that we get just seeing like these characters that they made. Up and I'm like, I want a whole series. It's like I don't want like they they give you just enough that it's kind of disappointing because I'm like I want more. Like it is insane how underrated this show is. Like among the people that love Trigger, like I know we all you know amongst us we love our gay firefighters. Like we love our giant mecha robots. But have you considered loving Turning Girls because this show is amazing and. I'm actually more shocked now coming off of, you know, watching and now discussing Supernatural Battles because you kind of do see a difference in how these casts are, I guess, written, are animated all together. I mean, even cutting aside, you know, the differences in that one is an adaptation long style show and another is, you know, kind of an episodic comedy show. Um, Just the way that these female characters are written you can very much see that the girls in supernatural battle come from a place of tropes um i'm I'm not not to be like oh they're tropey this is lazy like no we're not gonna make any claims on anyone's writing but just that the characters themselves in supernatural girl are very still deeply in the tropes that they're inspired from and they don't really stray too far from that Uh, not even to the point of using their supernatural powers but versus turning girls is 
a very mature show, and I don't mean that in like, oh, hey, gun, guns, violence, and <laughs> adult time, but like these are grown women dealing with grown adult problems, like sitting at awkward dinners, or you know, having to hide your weird personal um obsessions from your other adult friends or in the more niche slash slightly more relatable content having an embarrassing live stream and getting raided in the middle of it and having your online future ruined what so yeah no turning girl offers a lot of really fun awesome moments um the characters all four girls are amazing and they're my favorite girls they're all they're all insane they're all completely insane and awful for each other but i think that it, it like you said Stefan, i wish that this had been a full show i wish this could have been its own 12 episode fuck give me two seasons i'll take all of it and i will eat it up like i'm not a slice of life fan i'm really not like to me it's like i kind of have my own life drama my own difficulties and pressures in life like i kind of don't care if the imaginary cartoon character is going to ace their eighth grade exam like who cares they're going to have a bunch of other stuff in their life to take care of but like it's really fun just with this show how it, it went hyper focused into just four characters no supernatural no superpowers they're just awkward and nerdy and they need to get their lives together and i couldn't ask for honestly a more funny show yeah especially because like yeah like a slice of light because yeah, i mean th these are all like 29 year old uh like working women and it's like sl sl stories like them especially like manga anime series like that are like surprisingly really rare because it's like oh they're always you're always like they're always like going to be focused on more of like high schools and teenagers because that's the target audience and that's kind of the overall the easiest to write so it's like you never really get to see like that ex like th that 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 pov like so much so just even just in a very like small snippet just getting to see that in these like couple episodes like focused on these characters who are just yeah, like just complete disasters in everything that you're just like yeah i want i want more of i want more of these of these dude. girls just to see like what yeah what do they, what do they do dude it, this was this came out 2013 this was around that scary time that a lot of animes and mangas were switching from high school kids to middle school kids so if anything shit was getting younger like I remember that like it was around when I was really liking like assassination classroom and stuff that I was I, is when it started clicking in my mind. It's like wait a minute, everything used to be in high schools, but now everything's starting to be in middle schools, and it just started getting really weird to me because they were still trying to carry over the whole like your life. They were trying to carry life moments over still to middle school. So versus like you know I I totally understand that in the Japanese society the pressures and the stress of academic exams, especially entrance exams, especially to college. Like I understand that those are like that that is life changing. But it just it got really weird when there were just whole shows that had arcs about oh hey middle schoolers got to take a an exam as well too. It's like yeah, but they're also thirteen like their brains are not grown like give them some time give them some slack um versus you know i i love that with turning girls um you know you have the the first date is the whole awkward uh dinner day where they're trying to figure out who do they even talk to what do they even share like do they even want to like sit next to literally their best friend in the same table and then um uh, Episode two is very uh, pre Gretzko. You got a whole like workplace uh, situation, all these different characters. And man, I feel really bad for the one girl who's just insatiably horny, just like yeah. even at work. <laughs> she like, imagines I, the cups fucking. She just, just like, can't oh. help it. And it's okay. Like, you know, some people, you grow up and you're just still crazy horny it's like okay have fun and then and again that's just sort of just the 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 pleasure of this cast like th these characters are not anything like oh my god this is unique this is groundbreaking like no these are just if they just and i wouldn't even say realistic because they're just so silly uh, but just they're silly in very natural ways the their their plot points aren't that you know it, like going back to to ando their plot points aren't that they they like naming things in half latin german they they're just you know they're just a grown adult that still lives with her mom like that's just that's life that's <laughs> that's how it be sometimes they all have like they pretty much all have their like crazy quirks 
but it's like it's like you you see like how do the like how do they like show off their quirks like again like while we're while like while while like yeah working in an office environment uh like while like trying to feel like they're the one there's the one episode where they're go where they're going into the where they're going to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the concert and it turned out to be like a goth venue. Yes. Yes. And they find out that she's not just like an ultra goth. She is literally queen of the goths will punch security in the face <laughs> because the devil commanded her. And it's like, that's that again, some, some craziness, but you know, that's someone I would actually IRL hang out with. Like that would be one of my best friends. And then you have the frog girl who's the streamer. Which, that whole episode, like, if if you're going to watch anything, you're going to watch Inferno Cop first. Like, watch Inferno Cop, because it's only going to take you 15 minutes. And then if you're like, do I have to watch Turning Girls? I mean, I'm, like, you could be like me, where it's like, I don't care what a middle schooler's, how they handle their high school, their exams. If you're just someone that's like, well, I don't care what an adult woman, how she handles her day-to-day life, watch the streaming episode. Watch the ultimate nightmare of trying to engage with a stream for content and you get raided in the middle of probably one of the most embarrassing moments while you have your webcam on like that's quality quality entertainment it, it, it was so cringe like it was like it was so cringe because it's like oh no like you 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 have heard like you have seen people where this has happened like you you have heard pete had this happen to people it was too real that it was just fun it was funny and also just kind of like oh god i can't look like i i I had a stream open in another tab because and it was like, whoa, stream humor, which again, too, like 2013, you weren't seeing too much online e stream humor. Like most animes at the time, if they were doing anything on internet based, it was, um, you know, sci-fi tech. It was, um, you know, just about the time before Sword Art Online was going to make, you know, the virtual VR MMO game, like the internet, basically. So it's so funny that the whole internet episode of this short little series is her completely blowing a live stream. Like there's, there, there's no redemption moment for her. She's just left to feel sad and embarrassed in front of thousands of people on the internet. Again, relatable content <laughs> i love how it's like because because the whole thing is that oh she's like she's doing her like normal live stream where she has like a small amount of viewers but then her mother like walks in on the stream and like this just she starts like yelling and all that stuff so you get you get that kind of like confrontation so and then it's like a minute or so later then she ends up getting raided by a whole group of people because like oh the implication is that oh people posted people post her link being all like on like some kind of like she must be on reddit yeah, yeah she's on reddit. trending we're, on reddit so yeah, yeah, they're like oh, oh you, you, you see this shit and then and then it, she gets overloaded with people and it's like like normally like in other series when that happens suddenly people get overloaded while it's happening but it's like there's actually like a bu- there's like a realistic buffer into so it's like she's she's like she's so like in the beginning like she's, she's trying to recover but because she, she has her group but then more and more people come in because they learn they heard what happened so now she's trying to having to react to that so it's like oh god oh god so it's like they it's that realistic like take of like how that would actually happen it's like oh people wouldn't automatically go in. you need that time for more viewers to come in and then it's like there's just the oh crap like actually like processing what do i do what do i do how do i like react like it's a joke that's predicated on the entire scenario the whole situation and it's predicated on like how those situations actually happen like you know someone doing a funny on stream and then there being a thousand people to see the funny thing on stream like that's not as funny as you know like how they have it play out here where yeah she starts fumbling and goofing off and then you very clearly some some people posted her her stream link elsewhere and then the people show up and then it snowballs and then it gets like there's the humor it's not just oh haha she pulled a funny like because the humor in this is not even like when we say that like oh she 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 makes a fool of herself on stream like it's not even like in the crass crude like oh haha maybe she showed her underoos on stream like no it's not like a dumb joke it's literally just her being a fool and stuttering and like <laughs> it, it it's a whole just it's just the embarrassment and the awkwardness of you know this adult situation that occurs to people who do engage in stream on the internet yeah, and then and then like then the the final episode with the other yeah, it's been so long so I forget who all of the girls names are but then there's the one which is like the girl the girl's 30th birthday so it's like suffer like suffering from that whole thing of oh god now I'm the oldest of all my friend group I'm just turning <laughs> her whole, old her, her whole craziness is that she's 30 
her crazy trait is that she's 30. And as someone like less than 60 days away from turning 30 himself, like again, relatable. I understand that I'm reaching the point where I'm about to turn into dust, but how is that not the most relatable adult joke there? Is that, oh no, I'm going to turn 30 and then I'm I'm going to die. It's like, yep, that that's how it be. <laughs> And I, she she's the one I feel the most bad at because of all the of all the episodes. Like she 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 was always like the like she was the, like the one I liked the most just because she 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 was always so smile and so calming. So just with all the yeah. episodes, she she yeah, she she's always like the normal one. And then just suddenly seeing her getting like the like the the she she gets treated like the worst of all of them. And I'm like, oh, so <laughs> they for her. despise her. They hate that their friend is a grandma now and it's like damn y'all are mean girls <laughs> it, it, the, the, um. the series like the, the the shorts give me a lot of feels a lot of the series called chio school road which is like it's another it's another like kind of like very it's a very goofy like over the top uh, anime and manga where like one of the main tro well, one of the main like traits is I like no the the main two girl best friends are like absolutely the worst to each other and are constantly fucking and dicking each other over and it's like oh it's like oh yeah that's what that's what like friends like this will do is that they'll be the absolute worst to each other and it's like oh do they hate each other do they even like each other it's like I don't know but it's like the, but the, 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 that ends up like driving so much humor no yeah. they're they're just deeply in love and best friends for life they want to fucking kill each other but they love each other so much that's so funny (laughs) well yeah well i mean like uh there's that one line in supernatural battle where uh hatako tells tomoyo that you know you two are so close or you guys fight because you're so close so yeah um again it just it's kind of just there's a very stark difference in like the depth of these characters when you have you know the ones designed from a from an outside source as an adaptation versus, you know, the ones designed by a team of females to reflect uh, females. And it's like, wow, look at this. Look at these characters. Aren't these the best characters? Like, uh, since, you know, um, kind of to date this video as well, too, I know there's been some trigger, uh, well, former Gynex properties getting kind of uh, picked back up Uh as uh, trigger properties and stuff so i'm really hoping that like if they are looking into their backlog of stuff i hope they give you know turning girls a look back like this is this is a show that should not be have been missed or should be this underrated like this is some of the best funniest stuff that again in in a very small package um it's kind of uh one of the best things about triggers when it doesn't matter their time frame if they're given two seasons one season 20 minutes if it's if it was one of those one of their passion projects they put 120 percent into it and they are going to make sure that they try to put the best work out there even if it is a little you know popsicle stick puppet movement looking yeah and, yeah, and uh yeah and it, just like with inferno cop that the, all the episodes are also on the uh anime band show website so a uh, youtube channel so you can just go on there and yeah you can watch you can watch both those like whenever you want at any point y'all have no excuse to be watching good anime so you're welcome all right, yeah. So, we, so we, yeah, we just yeah. So you got we we got we we got we got those two uh, uh, very very good short stuff. So now let's go to the. It, it is considered an official net animation because I believe it was initially released online. But in terms of its structure and all that kind of stuff and how long it is. I feel like it is technically would be cons- it should be considered Trigger's third series, like third actual series, Ninja Slayer. Yeah. And Ninja, th- th- yeah. this will be very interesting because you all not only have you uh, haven't seen it before, but you also haven't even finished it. <laughs> no, I tried. Like I said, I am an awful <laughs> tour guide of the Trigger archives because yeah, I had not seen Ninja Slayer, and I tried to give it my best to try and watch it. I tried to watch whatever I had it had ready for, you know, our little discussions here so that way I wasn't just talking completely out of my ass. But um Ninja Slayer is uh it's a pretty show. It it's a gorgeous looking show. Um it, like you said, it's another adaptation kind of sort of cuz uh, I think it's actually based off an American comic. So this No, is a, what, what what it is so cuz I looked into yeah cuz Ninja Slayer has worked on a it's it's based on a novel series. But uh-huh. what what's interesting is that the novel series is written it, it it is it isn't it's written in Japanese, but it's written from the perspective of Americans 
writing a Japanese series. So what it, it the is shena- what? It, it, it no. is this very weird kind of like trippy Ugh. thing of like it's Japanese writing what like an American writer would write in a Japanese nin- over the top ninja <laughs> series. So it has that yet yeah, so like you even like even watching the series you can kind of see it's like oh yeah, it has that like very like I I I, I say very sin city esque aesthetic of just yeah. like over the top neon uh like you got you got like all the over the top like everything is like everything is a ninja and it's just like just, everything every- that was not everyone is a ninja everyone everything, is a ninja yes but yeah. everything in this show is a goddamn ninja <laughs> And it's like, and and it's and by and like the 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 juxtaposition is that yeah, like the the visual design and like the way of the world and like most like half of the animation is like yeah, it's like it looks super stylish and nice and beautiful. Oh, and then the gorgeous. second and then the second half of the animation when the battle actually starts, it's like throw in inferno cop and it's just everything ends up turning super cheap and it's like but it's cheap in a like intentional way but it's so weird it it is that it's that jarring it's it's weird because it's like it's this is what happened if inferno cop had somewhat of a budget and was a full series and it's like you see this and it's like i kind of appreciate some elements of it but it also very much clears why inferno cop being so short was a was a good thing yeah, it was on its side. I mean, even down to like, because Inferno Cop could have pulled the whole, you know, uh, Sakuga regular animation flow where like there were moments kind of like how Ninja Slayer does where, you know, there are times where the characters are just standing in one pose shaking and talking. And then what Ninja Slayer does is that then there's times where the Sakuga kicks up to 11 and then all of a sudden, oh man, the ninja's doing a backflip into a kick slash, but then it goes back to just talking uh like inferno cop at least stayed consistent even like like we said when it hits the instrumentality moment even the the angels in the sky look super che- are moving all jankily just like inferno cop was uh ninja slayer is just it, 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 it it's almost like it's wider so basically the lowers are lower the hires are higher so you and it, it's kind of uh similar to like you know how like with the Watchmen movie how in order to translate it from comic to movie um the transition between panels uh he has like the uh, the slow mo and the speed up it kind of felt like that like they were trying to create the connection between what would have been panels and so then the animation that was thrown in to connect the scenes just kind of varied on you know depending on I mean, it's trigger, so it could be anything from just their passion to, again, their budget. But, I mean, the entire basic premise just, you know, it, the, the premise is the title. You know, you have a titular ninja slayer whose entire family was murdered by ninjas. Ergo, he's decided to vow to murder anything that has decided to cre- to pick the wrong career path and decided to uh, be a ninja. He will be sure to uh, end that as quickly as possible. Well, the whole idea is that in this world is that the ninjas are created by a ninja soul uh, encompassing a body. So it's like by like this ninja soul encompassing a body, it, it provides like the person to be have the power of a ninja. And it's oh, like, so they're possessed. Yeah, and then mo yeah. So uh. most of the like so pretty much all of the people like with ninja power, like nearly all of the ninjas, are all part of this are all part of this like place called the Sokai. So it's like Sokai, yeah. which is like, oh, like that, that that's like the evil syndicate. And then uh, Ninja Slayer. It's Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated, but in, it is you know, the, the build- Ninjaverse. Well, I was about to say, but it's like, but the main guy has the, like, the, like, the main guy is, like, Kingpin with Eggman's mustache. Like, like, the, the, the main guy who's the head of this, the, the, he, who he has to fight. Yeah, is, is, oh. is King, and it's King, it's kind of like Kingpin by, it's Kingpin by way of Gamagori, because he doesn't have, his size, he, like, at times he's, like, a literal giant, and at times he's just, like, oh, he's big, and it's like, he's, then he's a titan, it's like his size does not matter. Oh, what was it? Uh, I think I saw it in a comment on the previous on the Kill a Kill video where uh, Gamagori's size is described as just the largest person in the room. Whoever's the biggest, he's bigger. <laughs> the, 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 there's like a part where it's like because it, it's animated in the Inferno Cop style, and he like goes into he's like, he's like entering a plane, he's entering a helicopter, but he's bigger than the helicopter. So what they just do is they just have the model go in like just it's about to go into the the, the helicopter and just goes. And it just disappears. The model just disappears and the helicopter flies away. 
it's just shit like that just like okay that's fun because it's like yeah it's so fun it's so funny with stuff like that but it's like it's weird because it's like a lot of like the like the story and stuff like that they 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 take very seriously so it's kind of thing like like is the seriousness part of the joke or it's like like that that, that's that's one of the things that kind of wrap my brain around because i'm like how much of this is supposed to be taken seriously and how much of it is a complete farce because like yeah whenever they go to the inferno cop animation like oh yeah you're not supposed to take this seriously at all but then there are times when they slow down and tell the story and it's like okay so do i take this seriously but and and especially (laughs) when and they spend so much i mean it's a 26 episode series like every episode is about like 12 minutes so it's the equivalent of a 13 episode full series but it's like even then it's like it it goes like honestly like it, it did take a while for me to finish because like it, the episodes feel like they drag on for so long and it's like so much of it like so much of it is repeating because it's very it's very episodic in a oh in, uh, ninja ninja slayer shows up and fights this guy now and he fights this guy now maybe there'll be like a little thing of a story of like oh this character this character comes about like there are a couple characters that come back here and there but for the most part so many of them are like one-offs that it becomes hard to kind of there are so many characters that have becomes hard to keep track of there's not monsters of the week it's literally a monster by day like you're just gonna get the next one the next episode and that was kind of what put me off from trying to go through the long haul at least with like supernatural battle you know 12 episodes one overarching plot i was gonna at least get my butt to the end little did i know that you know it's not even remotely close to where the end of the books are so you don't really get much of a conclusion there but uh i mean ninja slayer like you get the first couple episodes because you get his whole backstory in front of the convenience store and everything which i thought was hilarious which again you are so correct in that there's so much hard dissonance on like where what's the humor where's the seriousness and like again where where they use the animation very hard to make basically like i couldn't describe what you said as anything other than a joke like you know if you had the way you described it to me that was set that way to you know get a laugh versus like you said like he we have this whole plot with all these ninjas and the the ninja backstories and the whole ninja society organization and I mean, it, it gets really repetitive. I mean, it's fucking gorgeous. It's a it's a pretty show when the characters are standing still. And that opening, oh my god. Oh, the song is so good. You did not warn me, Stefan. And I'm going to... So, the opening for Ninja Slayer is Back in Black. You know, good title. By none other than the Boom Boom Satellites. So, we'll probably get to this more when we get to Kizniver. But uh, I can't listen to a Boom Boom Satellite song without crying just with <laughs> i got a little obsessed with uh kids Niver's opening around the the unfortunate passing of the lead singer of boom boom satellites so i got a little bit into their music just to around the like literally right after he died and so um and i didn't know about the ninja slayer theme which you know boo on my previous research of of the satellites but when i first heard it i was like no this can't be happening. And then, yeah, by the end of that first opening, I felt uh, I, I was feeling a feel. Uh, it brought back uh, some emotions. But, uh, you know, then, then the ninja started fighting. It was like, oh, okay, never mind. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but like, what, what, one of the big things that kind of like that makes it feel like that this isn't all supposed to be just a joke because like they they introduce I don't know if you got to it but they introduce a couple episodes in this character named Yamato Koki who's like a girl who's like a teenage girl who's like doing teenage girl things and then she ends up becoming like possessed by a ninja soul and so because of that the the, the Sokai are after her so it's like this thing of oh she ends up being forced on the run in order to protect her friends and to protect herself and it's like it it, it is like the, there, there's like a lot of of, like pretty like deep emotion of it of like oh like the girl who's like her her relationship with her with her classmates and it's like oh it's her her being like oh i have to go and like kind of set up like my like become a like a ninja and it's like she 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 like passes by ninja slayer at one point and the, his whole thing is like oh i have to slay all ninjas but oh no she 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 she's clearly a good person so he's like no i can't kill her and then other than that it's like then she pretty much has her own b plot that like is separate from ninja slayer that they keep on cutting back to occasionally and they basically treat it like like they treat it like 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 there, there isn't other than like the anim when the animation goes into uh like the cutouts they don't really do that many like ob- observational jokes with her so it's like it feels like they want you like to take that very seriously which is why like what which is what kind of like leads into the more of that whiplash i uh i like how we just call him ninja slayer he has a name in everything first and last but 
He's Ninja Slayer. TM. He's just, oh, and, and uh, I watched it in English, and Ninja Slayer is played by Chris Sabat, doing his uh, most Chris Sabat. Uh, uh, if you if you enjoy Chris uh, Chris Sabat uh, screams, I th- I think it's worth checking out just for that because he does some of the best. Yeah, just screaming in pain. <laughs> if you're down for uh, Sabat uh, knocking you all down. We highly recommend you listen to this uh, show. Death is the only way out for ninjas. They enter every, every time. Every time. That. Every time they enter, they go to see a uh, like a, a new enemy. He goes, "Domo, I am Ninja Slayer," and they introduce themselves, "Domo, I am Ninja Blank, whatever," and then they fight. <laughs> It's like just it's just, it's that repetitiveness of just over like they all have their code that they got to stick by and they all stick by it. Yeah. It's very cyclical. It, the show is very much on its own nice little cycle. Um, and then probably also just kind of why it does maybe lean more into the like that Inferno Cop style, you know, as opposed to being like, oh, it's got to be a studio thing because you know, Turning Girls, how much we gushed over it. it doesn't actually fall into the whole you know the cutout puppetry like they don't really use that for that show um but they did use it for this one um and it could possibly be just because um akira amemia is the director so he directed on inferno cop as well so it could just be you know having the same people kind of brings out the same inspirations and style there it could very much be you know more of a personalized style choice on it but I mean, just the structure of the plot itself doesn't help the show out a lot, especially with its length. It's kind of sad, but Turning Girls really affected my opinion of Ninja Slayers. I was so disappointed that Turning Girls was so short and that Ninja Slayer was over here with like 30 episodes. I'm like, no, that's not fair. Ninja Slayer shouldn't have 30 episodes and I only got six episodes of Turning Girls. Like, this is not fun. So, um... Stefan had actually recommended that all I needed to really do was watch like the last couple episodes. Uh, you know, he's starting to learn. He's starting to figure out where these trigger twists occur and where uh, the plot of most of these shows actually really starts. But uh, well, it, I didn't well, really more, get around to that. Well, it's more so just because the final six episodes are like a six parter. Like, it's, like, part one, like, you have part one, part two, part Jesus. three, so that's why I was, like, okay, like, you can, like, if you want, you can, like, do that, which, yeah, in regular- Is, regu- it, is in- it one big ninja? Well, it's more, it's like a, it's like a, like a gauntlet of, like, oh, it's like, it's like the final thing of, like, oh, going to fight the final boss, and he's, like, going up a tower and all that stuff. Oh, it's three ninjas in a trench coat pretending to be <laughs> There is, like, there's, like, weird stuff, like, there, there's, like, there's, like, one episode where it's a, there's, like, there's, like, a lobster guy, there's, like, a lobster guy ninja that he fights that then he gets killed, and then he res- gets resurrected in the same episode, and then he has to kill again. But is he, but is he bulletproof? Sadly, he's not bulletproof, but he, he does kind of look like the lobster from Inferno Cop, so it's, like, I could see, like, they, they made it, like, they made the design look similar to that, and I was like, I think I got what you were doing. Oh, bro, don't worry. If if they're, th- reusing lobster people is nothing compared to how high our, uh, our Kamina recount color is gonna get count by the end of this series, like, that's, we all need to make sure we're keeping a proper count on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm all, I'm, I'm not as good as, like, explaining and, like, analyzing stuff the same as you but it's like this like like halfway through like the 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 series does end up like like starting to deal with like a little bit like they 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 start like exploring some themes regarding like oh like the the, the over policing and uh like Uh and like yeah and like capitalism and like the 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 the, uh totalitarian control over like a city and like making people like telling people how to think and like trying to do like there's a whole episode where like ninja slayer is barely in it where it's like one of the characters who's like part of this own organization kind of like convinces a like a kid to like can convinces a boy to kind of like join the revolution and like take like it's like a lot of it's like a, a lot of it's like about workers rights and stuff like that so it's like fighting for like fighting for like equal compensation so it's like he he's like he's like joining part of like he's like part of like a, a uh a protest which then turns into like it's a protest and he's like wondering like oh why did do should we bring like weapons and stuff like that and she's like no like bringing weapons will like only pro like only like uh, provoke them it's like we need to like try to do it like peacefully in some way and of course it escalates into a riot and he's like trying to figure stuff out and he learns that oh the girl that he was talking with was part of like this whole other scheme of like c- causing more chaos and it's like he's like he's uh conflicted by it and it kind of ends with him kind of taking the girl's original position of convincing more people to kind of join the cause in the right way and it's like a it's a weird kind of like episode that's like really sincere it's like there is like a couple like jokes here and there but it's like it's very much in it's like in this like theme and message it's trying to tell and it's like huh 
And so yeah, I get focused on this character, this like one-off character that doesn't show up again. Wow, shocking twist that Ninja Slayer is the most important anime of 2021. Huh. Yeah, there, there's, there's another episode <laughs> where it's like, yeah, it's focused on Yamato and it's like she runs into a a, uh, a zombie ninja who's like just kind of like <laughs> hiding out somewhere and he kind of like looks after her for a bit while she's like, because she's always on the run. So she's like, she has nowhere to, she's like barely has any ways to stay. So she's like watching over her for a bit and it ends with him kind of like sacrificing himself to let her like escape. So it's like, again, like stuff like that. There's like, a, there's like funny things, but and they have like sincere emotions uh uh connected to it wow. i mean I, it, it's definitely a, a serious show i mean like you said um the, the 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 bad guy organization is is a company it's it's an incorporated so you know there's going to be you know those tones of of discussions towards capitalism you know nature of like people and how they interact with corporations and how the corporations try to affect people's lives. Like, I mean, you can say that we're reading too much into these cartoons, but trigger animations more readily than not will have these types of themes. Usually these themes of, you know, communal uh, ambitions versus, you know, individual destructive ambitions. And then who wins out in, in those two, like Tr- trigger discusses these things quite a few times. And it's, it's not, you know, absurd to notice them. The, the English dub does have the main villain say he wants to make Neo Saitama great again. And I was like, <gasps> oh, <"Yeah!" laughs> yikes. But I, hey, it makes it more relevant. I mean, it's not, it, it definitely fits in into like the whole, setup uh, of even the setting i mean from what i got from like the first couple episodes you know you got your very hard akira inspired neo tokyo punk inspired like cops everywhere neon everywhere and it, it, it adds to the gorgeousness of the show but you know those types of locations come with their own baggage of political and social topics that you know the show is probably going to discuss since it's decided to have it have that be its setting also, the series came out in 2015, so it was ahead of the curve in that way. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was ready for the shit show we were about to all experience. How we were all going to have to hunt ninjas every days of our lives. Yeah! Yeah! You know, and, and every, time the, every time the ninjas die, they scream, Sayonara! Well, they're polite. <laughs> All of the ninjas, like you said, have a, a code of conduct. I mean, it, it adds to the show's uh, formula. So, you know, the characters always say the same things over and over. And they don't pull a, a whole, uh, like with other shows where, you know, they do a cycle to, like, set everything up only to, like, completely destroy the cycle later on. Um, but, you know, there's always a future for more Ninja Slayer. Also, the whole also the whole series is, pre- is presented in 4 by 3 so, so it is, it is present four by three to represent the director's vision. Ah, uh, that's true. And, and if you try to stretch it, uh, the ninja slayer will come and hunt you down. See, you say that, but the five again. The, 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 I I, I kind of squeal because yeah, the whole ep- the whole series yeah is done in four by three to kind of like set this whole the, the, this like classic this like classic uh, old school t uh, old school animes feel. So it's like oh you're wa- watching an old school like very over the top uh, like se- <laughs> series. And in the in the final because the the whole series is like him he because the, the the his thing about he he's like wrestling with the ninja soul within him because the ninja soul basically just like oh go nuts go crazy it's like it, it's very much like <laughs> don't you want to go batshit insane yeah because it's like he, he he wants him to go crazy he wants him to unleash his full ninja powers but he, he but ninja slayer is like no i gotta i gotta keep my humanity i need to keep myself in control but then like there are the times <laughs> where he'll like go nuts and he turns into like a weird freakish monster that can like destroy everything but it's like oh the, but it's like destroy everything but at what cost so it's a lot of this like pretty much most of the series about him trying to fight through that control and like the final episode is him being like oh this ninja soul is it's not just like a separate person trying to possess me it is me it's like it is like half of my soul so he's like i need to accept it as part of myself it's like this is like part of me and like he's able to overcome and beat the bad guy by like be- by the two pieces becoming one and when he does that the screen literally breaks apart into 16 by 9 and i'm a sucker for format changes so uh, when it cuts from four by three and it breaks apart the theme song 
they might as well have played the theme song. They do. That's they amazing. do play the theme song. That's why it's amazing. And I'm like, holy oh. fuck, yes. So it's like the whole thing. I mean, like, the, there's a lot of like fun fight, and 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 that's in that final fight. They do like they don't go for like the cheap and for the the, the cheap uh, cardboard cutouts. They go full Sakuga animation. It's like, oh, okay, this is really. I thought this was. It was. It was kind of a slog to go through it, but that was a like a legitimately satisfying ending. All right. Well, I mean, and then you also get your whole trigger message at the end of self acceptance that you know that rage and the drive for vengeance we don't want it to consume us but we also don't want to see it as something that's uh separate from us that th- these are things that are born from ourselves so you know even with me saying like i didn't really feel like jiving and watching ninja slayer i mean y'all should still watch it it's still a gorgeous show it gives you you know more like into that whole trigger style especially you know if that whole inferno cop style was kind of like oh that's interesting because i know most people see it as like a a, a cheap Thing. they kind of see it purely on that budgetary side but honestly like it's i can see it as a, on a stylistic aspect as well i mean it, i would describe it very much to like how the american animators hannah and barbara did a lot of their animations you know like the the re re-rolling background you know the uh singular poses that a lot of the characters had while standing like yeah they come from that economic reason but you know, it adds its own stylistic flair then to that final product that with those limitations, this style was what was born out of it. And I think it's really interesting that, you know, Ninja Slayer goes the whole nine yards, you know, went and finished up uh, its whole run uh, of a show. Well, so. well, I mean, not real. I mean, not real. I mean, yeah. it, it, well, it, there's it, always it, cliffhangers. It, there's always cliffhangers, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 end, it ends in, like, a way where, like, yeah, it ends in a way where, like, oh, the big bad is defeated, but it's like, uh-oh, there are still, like, things to deal with. There are still loose ends. It's like, there's an ending, but it's like, especially because the, the novels are still going on, so it's like, there's very clearly, there's very clearly more story to be told, but it's like, yeah, it, 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 give, it gives it, like, an ending, so to speak. But, but when do we get to the part where the Ninja Slayer hunts down a uh, Team Kid Virgin or whatever Virgin team they were in just assassinates them all? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I think uh, I th- I'd say at least watch like the first two episodes or so, and if like oh if, if you if you're really vibing with it, then I'd say yeah go 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 check out the remaining uh, twenty four episodes. But it's like yeah, yeah, but if you're if you're watching those first couple episodes and you're like eh, I don't really feel it. it's like it's kind of all right. Then I'd say ah uh, like, I'd say yeah, don't really bother with it because yeah, because it, it is pretty much just more of like they they'll, they'll throw in those little like ch- like those little like twists here and there, but it's like yeah, for the most part they're pretty much all kind of like they follow the same route and i recommend watching the op and if the op doesn't do it for you well then that's okay <laughs> i don't want to say there's one plenty for me there was one running joke that kind of annoyed me uh for most of it where it's like one of the characters is like is a character named nancy who is like who, who she, she she's like she's like she's like the journalist who kind of like follows around she's like she, he's like she's like the closest uh, to a confidant for ninja slayer who kind of like she she has this ability where she can like plug herself into computers and kind of like access like a cyberspace so she's like oh, somebody wow. yeah so she's like somebody like goes around like so she's helping she helps him but like the biggest thing is that she she's basically like the damsel in distress for the most part where she's like she's constantly getting kidnapped over and over and Yikes. it's like there's some and it's like every time she gets kidnapped she's usually being groped and like like some like sexually assaulted in some way and like the camera like it lingers on her in like various different ways and it's like the joke is that they're constantly lingering on her and for an uncomfortable amount of time and i'm like uh, okay, I know the joke is, but I'm like, uh, I'm so tired. Say, do you ever feel? Do you ever feel uncomfortable when the joke is that you should feel uncomfortable? Because yeah. I sure do. But they kind of redeem themselves. Where in the in the second to last episode is like, because like the the final six episodes are like, yeah, like the, there's like it's like the final like the final arc, and then the penultimate episode does like it's like centered as a clip show. So it's like, oh, here oh. are ninja Sla- here are ninja slayers best moments, and they're all like original moments like it's like they make you think you're gonna not watch even a clip from show. the show yeah so the, there you go like, Wait, hey, tr- trigger always has a pretty good hand when it comes to these clip show uh recaps in any of their shows uh turning girls was pretty fucking good too um i don't remember i don't think the other ones did no because kill a kill didn't get themselves a nice recap episode they uh they spent their budget well there 
Yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, so they do yeah, so it isn't like really a recap. It's just kind of like ten random adventure, like ten random bad guys that a ninja slayer fought. And then one of them is Nancy, is like so she she's plugged in she's plugged into like the thing doing her stuff, but she's all dressed up in like an animal suit with the machine gun. She's like, try to kidnap me now <laughs> and starts blowing everybody away. So I'm like, okay, that was a funny way to like pay there off you go. an old joke of her constantly being kidnapped. It's just like try to get me now. It's like okay. That was a that was a genuinely funny like uh, oh, payoff. Goodness. All right, so that yeah that that's everything with uh, Ninja Slayer we got. So let let let's let's wrap this up with a little uh, into the Triggerverse, or as some people <laughs> like to call it, Space Patrol Lulico. I mean, either or is valid. I like to think of this now as our next Magical Girl show, show five, Lulico. <laughs> I did. I, I yeah, because I, I yeah, I I'd seen I'd seen like clips and stuff like that for the longest time. I'd been like, ooh, I really want to watch this, but I just never like had the opportunity or chance to check it out. And then yeah, at this point, so I, I I knew like the premise, but I had no idea what kind of show it was. So watching it, well, first thing I was like, huh, only six minute long episodes. That's kind of disappointing. And then my second my second reaction was, what the fuck is going on? And then my third reaction was, holy shit, Trigger Multiverse, what? It was like yep. it was like generally like thing thing on top of thing on top of thing, and I'm like, man. Oh, and then the fourth one was like, oh shit, this actually has a story to tell, and it's like I thought this what didn't have. I thought this was this was just a bunch of like again another shit post, but it's like no, there actually was like a message to go through, and I'm like, it it, it just kept it it surprised me even in more than Kill a Kill Day because Kill a Kill was still kind of an overall like I had an idea of like oh this is telling a story, so it's like it's gonna go to its conclusion and space and Lulico just kind of went in so many different directions that it was just like i don't know where this is gonna go no it's really nice i uh i mean i think it's really interesting and fun to appreciate that uh so you know gynex and then all of the trigger uh employees you know they love themselves good referential humor like it's within the dna of like a lot of these development teams is that you know if you want to reference a thing you reference that darn thing and you make it the biggest scene in the episode that you're animating like they they celebrate that so i love that with lulico you get to where trigger uh basically they just started to have their own backlog there like i like how it didn't take them too long they didn't wait till they had like 20 different shows to do their multiverse they were like okay what do we got we got three shows that's more than enough we're good to go let's start crossing them over um but luluko is an adorable show um it is another one of my favorite trigger shows i i don't i don't know if it's like on purpose or not but like their shorter stuff just really hits me i mean it could be that whole like portal effect like because it's something that i can just like chow down and finish in an afternoon like i'm able to consume it at least more readily i wouldn't say consume it more often but at least it's you know i have the ability to like if i want to watch all of space patrol luluco or if i want to watch all of inferno cop like it's not a time commitment it's not like i'm gonna have to clear my schedule it's something that can be done and i can get it from beginning to end but um i do love just with this show that you kind of get a a condensation or or a, a condensation of you know basically the whole you know trigger slash imaishi's whole you know philosophy on the whole you know celebrate what's unique what's special uh about yourself and have that be your force on the world so you know you get that a lot in kill a kill that's where the whole you know be naked be vulnerable share with others you know re- uh, rely on others so that we can all be a community together uh, you go to luluco and you know everything is a lot shorter you know the things are a lot snappier things are a lot quicker um, so you know you start off with your basic plot of uh, a very normal girl who wishes for nothing more than to have a normal quiet life minus the hand fetish uh, <laughs> but unfortunately the biggest issue is that she's not normal in the least bit she doesn't live in a normal town full of aliens her dad doesn't have a normal job he's a cop and has a freaking like spaceship hidden in their apartment her mom ran away because she is a self-determined space pirate and yeah so despite all that 
she still wishes to have this normal life. There's still this uh, this disassociation. Uh, I'm kind of glad you brought it up with Ninja Slayer, where he sees himself as A, and he sees the ninja spirit as B, and not to be the same thing. Luluko has the same sort of uh, starting uh, character slate there, is that you know she has her idea of herself which she has created basically based on other people's idea of what normalcy is within the show. They have like a really quick conversation where they mention that it does come from Luluko being concerned with what other people say is normal, what other people think and what, cause, cause you have the whole scene where like she embarrasses herself in front of the class in the very first episode. So you have a lot of those, you know, moments and it just all builds up into this basically like love quest for of Luluko to to basically learn to like love herself to be able to understand that she's not normal and that that's okay and if anything that's better like that it's great that she's not a normal girl living a normal life that she has things that are different about her and that she needs to acknowledge express and share those things and so uh, i mean I, that's very broad reading on like this quick little short show but I, the, the, it's, it's more of the journey, uh, with all the pit stops along the way, with all the crossovers, with all of the afterlife involved, uh, to get to that moment where, you know, Luluko is a, is a brave, self-determined girl that don't care about what anyone else thinks and loves herself. Like, come on, that's, that's some good shit. I like that because yeah, the it is uh, it's a thirteen episode series, and I like that every three episode well, it every it, it's like split into four chunks, so to say, because you got the first three episodes, four to six, seven to nine, and then ten to twelve, which are all basically kind of like their own self contained like kind of stories. Like, like like you have the first one, which is kind of like the introduction of like oh here are the this is the world, here are the characters, this is what like the setup is gonna be. Then you got the second one, which is like oh we have like the villain showing the quote unquote villain showing up to attack. So now we all gotta like fight them. Then you got the third one, which is basically just the whole crossover uh, episode. And then you got the fourth one, which is the finale, where they kind of go into the story and themes and kind of lead everything to its conclusion. So it's like it is very, it's very uh, structured in like the, a way where it's like, yeah, it, it kind of feels like a four episode series, uh, in the, and, and it yeah. works very well in that kind that way. Yeah, it's really good. Well, um, you can see the act sort of kind of going uh into the genre here because um you know despite the fact that supernatural battles had girls with powers um you know it doesn't really have the other genre uh tropes doesn't really have the other genre themings that come with like magical girls versus luluko is as magical girl as kill a kill is as magical girl as panty and stocking is as magical girl as sailor moon all of those uh you know down to transformations down to justice gun morphing uh down justice! to justice you know, gun morphing i i love the one joke where like she fires a bunch of rounds and the voiceover like restarts for each bullet so it's like justice 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 Ju- justice gun morphing it's like oh that was the good jokes are all there yeah the, it, 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 it has it has such a like a, just a fast just a quick fast paced humor it feel it very much feels like if kill a kill and inferno cop were kind of put into a blender this is like what would come out because it has that it has that very like limited and shit posty inferno cop style but there's a sense of aesthetic and kind of visual flair to it that like kill a kill perfected that makes it feel like that kind of perfect fusion of the two well, because the big thing too is just uh, you get a lot of that from you know the protagonist from Luluko because she she tries to put herself as like a cynical protagonist. She tries to make herself as someone who understands what is normal, what is not normal, and thus she strives for normalcy. But you know it it later becomes where she has to like tear all that down where she needs to just kind of have more acceptance and they they have hints of that like at the beginning when she's talking to a to pretty boy alpha omega nova uh he he will represent all of our prettiness in this show uh there's a moment where like they're walking around in the town and uh, she mentions that she can't tell the difference between the aliens and non-aliens and i think that kind of gives you like a good clue into you know like the value system in this show that like you know that's one of her powers as well it's definitely a very tropey magical girl powers you know you know she not to say explicitly that she does not discriminate but that she doesn't see this difference in people that she just kind of 
accepts everyone, just kind of is able to interact with them all on that same level. It's just unfortunate that she's so obsessed with trying to be normal that she can't just accept, you know, situations as they are to try and be more flexible in those situations, you know, until later on, until things start getting so abnormal that she cannot, she can't hold it, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I want to I, I want to uh, bring up because uh, I, I I again I watched I watched this in English and I wanted like th- I think that th- this this cast was I think this cast did like a really great job phenomenal uh, with, this, uh, w- with this material like uh, I was because ex- I didn't realize who the voice was gonna be I, for some reason I was expecting Erica Mendez and I'm pretty much that's because I because I know because she plays. Uh, because she she played Ryuko, I know she plays Akko, and I think she plays somebody in BNA. So I was just expecting her to also be here. But then when I heard Bri- uh, Brittany Karbowski, I was like, "Holy shit! I love that! I love her!" And like her her voice just fits so perfectly in that because she she has that like she has that kind of like that nerve. She does that nervous stutter like feel like better than anybody. I think. But no, it, it, it's kind of just like what I said. How she's this cynical character. Like she makes comments throughout the show that like this shouldn't be happening to a teenage girl or this is really yeah, like she tries to be this character that can point out the logic in the situations but it doesn't do you any good it doesn't do her a lick of good that she can like see the logic and like and i just feel like the, the voice acting they gave her is really great because it's a really great voice for like just pointing stuff out in the middle of the action as opposed to you know some uh some uh some female voice acting it just comes down to oh wow like you know a very reactionary reactionary type voice but like always being amazed as the reaction versus there are several times in the show that luluko was like that's dumb like that what's going on here like she questions things um but then again that starts to get torn down when uh she starts to learn that she has to just kind of accept things as they are especially the things that come from inside her heart yeah, and th- there's also uh, 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 Jamie Marchi as Midori, where who she 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 always does like a great job with <laughs> Valley Girl. With if you need like a Valley Girl uh, voice in in your anime, you you go for her. And it's like she shows it, no, like just a, yeah, she's so good at doing it. This one, like it's it's. I mean, it's a little similar to her panty voice, but again, just kind of how how close this show can be seen to like Panty and Stockings lineage. I took it almost kind of referential been like yeah no i hear you there i i know that you made other magical girl shows i see you yeah and i feel like she 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 that voice adds a lot more kids i feel like midori on her own is just kind of like oh like she, she she's like the more of like though the filler third character that like has a lot of like funny comments but like i think i think her vo- her voice kind of elevates her like a lot yeah it gives her a whole personality gives her a whole character um and i mean she also does also serve to make sure that we know that this show is within the genre. How many times in magical girl shows does the magical girl beat the bad guy and the bad guy, instead of dying, becomes a new friend and ally to the magical girl. And she's Ta-da. just like, uh, uh, I'm bored. I want to join the good guys now. <laughs> she, w- she wants to be a gun too. And then, and then not Inferno cop is like, sure. Nobody's volunteered before. Not, not Inferno cop. It's over. Over justice. justice. Yes, if you're, you're under arrest. You're free to go. <laughs> you're free to go. He can arrest and release at will. That's just how much justice he has. But yeah, no, he's 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 Inferno Cop 2.0 plus. Uh, because Stefan hasn't seen it and he doesn't know it. A little bit of Gurren Logan. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. And, 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 and he never moves from his desk. <laughs> Well, the de- he's a part of the desk. Yeah, he, he he is stuck to the thing. Yeah, and uh, Bob yeah, Bob Carter is great as that voice. Uh, Monica Rial uh, as a Luluko's mother surprised me because she she's doing a like a very different voice than she normally does because she normally like hear that 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 uh kind of kind of Bulma type voice of just kind of her usual tone, but she's like going like full screaming insanity, and it was just really it's really fun hearing her go on that that kind of a direction. Oh, it's it's really cool. Um, and I do like how just sort of within the her role within the plot kind of ties into uh Luluko's whole family. Uh, she has her dad, who you know is a cop, so obviously a career in lined with like rules, regulation, normalcy. So you know his whole push to be normal, even though he admits to himself that he's not normal all the time. Um, you have then her mom, which is kind of meant to represent this unabashed like fully invested like self-love like this whole 
like to the point that she leaves her family behind that she's just in it for you know pure id like whatever she's a crazy her- space pirate <laughs> She wants to be a crazy space pirate. I don't blame her. I want to be a crazy space pirate. But uh, it does kind of just set up that whole where Luluko needs to find her balance. Like the show itself also doesn't make the pure message be like, you need to love yourself and just do whatever the fuck you want and ignore everything else. Like that's not the message. Otherwise, you know, Luluko would be the protagonist. But instead it's, you know, about just accepting what's inside that even if it's not normal if it's what's true to yourself that that's what you need to like strive and value because that's another thing too when we get to uh to the part four is you know the the ideas of what we place value in and in placing value in certain emotions but you know but that's when we you get to the end of the show you have to get first go through the first couple acts of the show you know that first act where it establishes our magical girl show you know you we get nice magical transformations we we get some of the bad guys we're introduced to our our uh pretty boy i don't even want to call him love interest i mean i guess i should because love is the theme of the show but it's like that, that, that was the other that was about the, my, my 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 favorite performance is alpha who's played by justin briner so it's, it's it is so funny hearing midoriya act like an asshole it is it is just great here because 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 justin briner has like he i mean if you hear his regular voice talking he's basically just midoriya he's just that that oh gosh awkward g willy type of guy so just hearing him just be a deadpan snarky bitch just alpha uh, omega he, he, is low-key ruthless high-key genocidal like let's just put it that way <laughs> it, 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 is, it, it was so much fun they were like i feel like in any other voice or even just reading it like it would be it would be like god this guy's so this guy's so annoying but his voice just like me ma- he makes me like him more than like i probably would in it again again that, 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 is, that is the power of like a great performance it's like somebody who would be more someone who would be more irritating can be like much more enjoyable with with a good with a good guy uh piloting the ship so to speak right so so you have the intro and you know we're introduced to our main girl we've got our boy we've got our best friend slash a uh, drug kingpin <laughs> like i love midori he's so <laughs> funny um and so we get introduced we have a hijinks or two uh we have the escalation to where they're trying to stop a meteorite from colliding uh people travel by meteorite like it's it happens multiple times in the show so i think it's kind of funny that it's actually used as a joke halfway through that like no yeah we've already established that people travel by via meteorite so you know they go to the moon because this is trigger so you know eventually they got to go to the moon uh and then there's some time warp shenanigans and then we hit the exciting fun part of lulico where uh you know like i said trigger had its own backlog so it's like let's do it let's cross over it on ourselves and so well um, well, well, first i was like because first i was like when 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 lalico showed up and i'm like holy shit she's wearing the life fibers and i was like telling you holy shit she's wearing the she's wearing the life fibers and you were just like just wait and then i get to the first (laughs) episode of that third part and you go to planet klk and you get this whole planet covered with those fancy lines and i'm like oh no they're not going to and it's just it just keeps s that whole episode is just escalating and escalating you get the red text you get the guy you get the you get you get the literal you you have you have the clothes flying in the air you have the beat of the music going on i'm like oh they're gonna do it they're gonna do it they're all they fight them and then it's don't lose your way and oh yes <laughs> and then Sawano drops and everything feels great my favorite thing too is uh with uh with the klk uh crossover there is they don't like hard cross it over like they don't run into mako and ryoku which you know they've already had mako in another show you could have had her again like we're always happy to see her. Yeah, I, I think I think yeah, it worked. It worked in this because it's like oh, it's like they're yeah, they, they don't see Ryuko and Maku, but they instead go to another planet that the life fibers have taken over, and it's like oh, I think that, that actually, basically it, yeah, yeah, it would have been yeah, it would have been so much fun to see yeah to see her interact to see her interact with them, but I think it makes more sense in the context of the story to have them like visit a like a, a life fiber infested planet because it also it also adds more no, and it, it has one of my favorite jokes. It jokes that fit that that answers a retcon that i didn't think yes. would answer because it's like oh how do we it's like you, you can't you can't defeat me unless you have a super bladed weapon that's made out of me and then it's like 
fire and they start burning alive fire? and it's like uh, well yeah why trigger. didn't they just burn the life fibers it's like you don't think about you didn't think about that watching it and then i watched that episode and i'm like wait oh shit yep. <laughs> like exactly. they, they they answered a retcon that the, nobody asked about and i thought it was also neat too that like with that planet like they go to it because they mentioned that it's a planet that everyone loves to go to to find exactly what they're looking for and then it just turns out that the planet is just like a life fiber trap where just everyone sees whatever the thing they're most looking for uh, so that's why, like, the planet's covered with, like, the best taste of uh, Ogi Kubo. It's because, like, if people were looking for, like, a pineapple, all of the signs would say best tasting pineapples and stuff. So I thought that was kind of neat, too, just, again, with them not going full, like, oh, this is Honoji Academy, but rather it's a completely different thing that has life fiber beasts. And then, of course, over justice solving it with fire which is so great um over justice 2 i think it's really funny because they throw so many dad jokes like straight up literal like midori is like dad jokes really but i love when he says the line what is it a crime times a crime equals justice yes <laughs> i love that <laughs> like i i think i need a shirt i need that on a shirt please <laughs> but oh yeah all of the humor there with the uh, over justice is so funny and i just i love that they do play on like you know trigger does like to reuse character designs they like to modify them and, and, and it's fine so i love how they have the whole joke with you have over justice and like wait you we, know we, what we, he we, looks we, like we'll get we'll get we'll get, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to that once we get to part four just because i want to talk yeah. about next we'll get next there. uh but, yeah because the next you got the second episode which is little witch little witch academia which again i did not expect <laughs> i did not expect that because i forgot because I, I keep forgetting that oh yeah the two little witch academia movies came out first before yeah. these series so little witch academia was part of the trigger canon before the series came out a year later so i was like when yeah. that happened i'm like holy crap and then it's like then you have like a whole thing of like oh you see the thing you see like a brief thing of like Akko and some flying and then you have like an actual conversation with Susie and I'm like holy shit that's so cool and then it's like oh shit Susie fucking tried to murder <laughs> uh, no Luluko there's no try to care. Susie straight up murders Luluko it just turns out that Luluko is not getting murdered for another 60 years but like <laughs> she done poisoned the water well there but no like you said like actually talking to the characters that's kind of where I thought it was interesting that there was at least a uh, diversity in the whole crossover it wasn't just like it wasn't Kingdom Hearts where oh Luluko shows up to the kill the kill plot then leaves and then oh Luluko shows up to the Little Witch Academia plot and leaves I like how you know the kill the kill reference was a completely independent thing that just relied on like knowing the plot versus little witch is straight up you know is a little more you know kind of kingdom heartsy where luluko and and alpha omega just show up into their world and they interact with the characters yeah and then the again yeah, and, and then yeah and, the, and then the episode after that is I did not. I knew it was reference to something, but I did not know what the reference was. So then, after the series, so that was just that was the episode. Where I was just kind of like, "This is a reference. I just don't know what it is." And I looked into it after. Yeah, it was it was a short film. It was a short film that they did called "Sex and Violence," which I, at this moment yeah. I still haven't seen yet. But it's like at least from at least just based on the, that that uh, that that little clip of that little section in the series, I'm like, okay, I can kind of get what the vibe of this short is. Yeah like purely over the top literally sex and violence i mean they call freaking bouncing sex chan a sexy missile it's like what why are you guys no trigger stop don't no sexy missiles please <laughs> uh, but yeah that i figured that would probably be the one where most people that even if they were because i didn't know about sex and violence the first time i saw luluko i think that was kind of that ends up being the more underground reference that's all the that's the deepest cut for all the kids uh versus everybody was like oh hey i saw i saw kill a kill like yeah me too <laughs> and uh, apparently because i know that uh kisniver was airing at the same time that luluko was and apparently there is a ref there is some references to kisniver but since i haven't seen it, i have no idea what they were uh I they didn't pop up to me. It could have been like maybe the logo or you know yeah, basic possibly. character design. But if you're gonna do that, then Supernatural Battle has 
references to Kiznaiver. Yeah, like, that, that, that's why, like, I'm, yeah, because it is, I feel like, yeah, like, the reason why there was no references to Ninja Slayer and uh, Supernatural Battles is because technically they aren't owned by Trigger, so it's, like, this weird thing of, like, yeah. maybe they could have had a reference in there, but they'd have to sneak it in rather than just being explicitly having the characters from the other series show up because, like, oh, yep, yeah, we own this. We can do whatever we want. We can do whatever which that which leads to in part four when you got the whole twist is that uh, that that o- uh, Omega is well he's not technically a villain he's just he's just like a fake he, he he's like he's like the neutron he's he's, he's like the the uh, the uh, the uh, n- neutral guys from Futurama I have no opinion I have no opinion I like how that's like one of Luluko's like main motivators on in the last quarter of the show is she realizes that uh, so Alpha is working for the Black Holians, and that's just what we're going to call them. They're yeah. basically the anti-spirals. They're basically the life fiber. You know, they're they're this, these beings of immense just, like, destruction or structure or, you know, they want everything to be either within their grasp or non-existent or all the same. It's the same plot. But uh, that Alpha Omega comes from a planet of people that, you know, don't feel, like you said, one way or the other. And so Luluko is all motivated that, like, he didn't lie to me when he betrayed us. He never said he felt one way or the other. It's like, yeah, but if his actions were towards one way, then that kind of, I don't know. Maybe I'm just someone who judges people harder on, like, their actions than on their words. But I thought that was really silly when Luluko was like, he never lied. It's like, it doesn't matter. That's not what the issue is he betrayed <laughs> yeah I, I i think i think with that it's more so a thing of like oh yeah i've since he can't feel since he can't feel anything it's more so a thing of like oh i'm doing a job like i don't know like i do 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 you like that like uh, he never, gosh, he never like, says don't, he, nothing personal kid. yeah he never said he like yeah which is like the whole thing of like oh like she, where she's like oh he never said he didn't like me he just he never said anything so that, that, that this kind of thing and like he never said that he is evil or that he wants to do the thing he's just again doing his job so it it's that whole, I mean, it's the whole thing where she, she's like, I'm going to go and confess my love and get his answer, and then I'm going to arrest him. So it's like, she still has a thing of like, oh, he did exactly. a bad thing, so I got to stop him. But it's also like, her feelings, like, she, she, she thinks her feelings matter, so she wants to know, she wants him to kind of figure out, like, what his feel like. She wants, she, she wants his feelings to matter, and they too, do. and wants and to know what those feelings are. Yeah, and they do, and I love that that kind of becomes then one of the big messages in this show is that you know your feelings matter yes you the one listening to this the one watching the show your feelings matter even if you know the universe has judged it mathematically as the most worthless thing in the world the fact that you felt them and you felt them honestly the show argues you know that's what puts the value in there and that you should at least share those feelings out or at least express those feelings out but I do think it's just so, so funny that, uh, cause I, I feel like a lot of the show kind of builds it up as, you know, Luluko has not, not like in a really negative way, but delusions about like her relationship with, uh, with Alpha. And I've, I've, I've seen other shows do this where like, you know, if a character is acting so much like, oh, I, I love this character. I love this character. And she doesn't even know the first thing about the character. You know, you've seen, there's been shows that have done like the whole exploration in that you shouldn't project what you think your relationship with someone else is on that person like she never told him that she loved him until like after uh, well spoilers after she died because <laughs> you know she has her heart broken so hard like like so luluko spends the whole first three three quarters of the show obsessing over alpha omega to the point that she wants a quiet life but she still wants to have the pretty boy and you know on her supposed deathbed she forced herself a nice little kiss there as well that made things a little awkward but you know we get to the end where she feels the maximum lovey-dovey uh, emotions towards this empty shell. And she gets betrayed, her heart gets broken, and she dies. Relatable content. But it's after she died that, you know, where she's counseled on, you know, the true value of honest feelings and about herself. Like you said, she recognizes that she's been wronged she doesn't just want to tell him tell alpha that she loves him she wants to tell him that she loves him and arrest him she wants to hold him accountable she wants you know the wronged her wronged emotions to be righted she demands justice as it were (laughs) 
But uh, why don't why don't you let them know what happens after our uh, our pro tag it gets her poor little heart broken. Well, well, I think it's funny that she she gets her heart stolen. Yeah, she gets her heart stolen. But it's like the getting her heart stolen I'm isn't broke. what ma- no it isn't what makes her die. It's dying. Like like she's still technically alive after her heart stolen, but then she dies of shock. <laughs> not only that is funny, and then she ends up in a very familiar looking hell, and I'm like, oh no. Don't tell me. And then she is oh, greeted yes. by she is greeted by, by 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 a certain someone who provides some excellent advice. Oh yeah, they throw it Inferno Cop because yes, I mean... Inferno Cop played played by Chris Sabat, which is just mm, it's just so perfect. Just again, even after hearing him in Ninja Slayer, just hearing him as Inferno Cop, I'm like, God, I would have killed. I would have loved to see an Inferno Cop dub with him because it's like, ah, oh, just he he fi- he fits that voice like like just and especially because Inferno Cop in in this, I mean, he he has that Inferno Cop ness, but he's also written in like a more like a more human side of like he gives he gives her he actually like gives her like some like good advice and like helps provide her with uh, like w- what she needs needs to to get like that that whole that whole pep that whole mentor pep talk to get her yeah, he, uh, back on her feet he also offers her some uh, fondue crab meat yeah. that's what i assume he's munching on i <laughs> you know anime food it could be anything <laughs> i love that line where he's, where he's uh, later he's like he's like i'm a skeleton i'm not dead <laughs> well he also mentions that he's what 21 <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'm 26 or something like that <laughs> there you go that's the whole... but yeah i that to me is like even after throwing in the life fibers, even after throwing in Little Witch and Sex and Violence, the fact that we get in the like final hour of Space Patrol, one of the greatest like cameos ever of Inferno Cop. And, and, and I think it's really great too because they even mentioned then because they have a whole joke where Luluko is like, you look like uh, over justice. And Inferno Cop laughs. It's like, you think we look alike? Not at all. Like, <laughs> this is fair. You're right. You, they look nothing alike. I mean, the noses are completely different. Yeah, no, no, yeah, because I was like, yeah, because in Overdust, when I saw Overdust, I'm like, oh, yeah, hi, hi, Inferno Cop. So I wasn't thinking that they would put Inferno Cop because they already have their Inferno yeah, Cop. Rep- they already put their Inferno Cop reference in the first episode. So then it's like, oh, when he shows up, I'm like, holy crap, I wasn't expecting. Like, even after all of, like, all of the, 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 the teeth, all the cameos and stuff, they throw in something else because you weren't, you were, you aren't expecting it because you think, you think they already used their cameo up. Like, same way, yeah, like, 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 with the life, because you should have the cameo of the life fiber. So I'm not thinking, oh, they're all gonna show like they're gonna they're not gonna show them again and then they do and i'm like holy crap so it's like yeah that that way of that 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 way of twisting like using the cameos to kind of twist the plot in like very clever ways it i mean it adds layers of enjoyment it doesn't matter if you're brand new to trigger or you know you're you're pulling the trigger then you know you're gonna find all kinds of cool little twists in the show um, but yeah, then it just accelerates from there. <laughs> yeah, and I love how the I love how the end like because I mean like through through most like through that whole series like just her her crush on uh, Nova was kind of like the one thing that was kind of like eh, just because it, it felt it it felt very forced and it felt really weird like he's like I I kind of got what they what were going well, yeah, yeah I got what they were, go- they were going for but I'm like uh, it just feels like it was like a weird thing just like they constantly like deal with but then once you get to that that final act it's like oh like the, this was all on purpose and it's like they everything came together it wasn't just an empty it wasn't just a crush for the sake of a crush it was all like for a specific purpose and it was telling this this story about like these feelings and why those feelings met even though even if they feel like kind of empty or worthless they do matter and it's like oh they actually made it like they they made it worthwhile in the end and it's like oh give give me give me that made made me rethink the entire maybe rethink that whole entire thing and it's so great. I mean, then then they throw in even more Gurren Lagann references. They have her uh, dock into the giant spaceship. Uh, fuck, I, I love how the space pirate mom, her gun morphing form is a tank, like a bone <laughs> tank. It's so hilarious. No, like, they, they have uh, what they have over justice fuses with the he fuses with the pirate ship. Hell yes, because justice is a miracle. Yeah, and then and then you get the whole then you get the whole confession thing, and the guy and the guy grows a heart. He his heart grows three times sizes. They they straight up. It's straight up from how the Grinch stole Christmas. Like, <laughs> and then it's like, and then they save the day with the power of love. 
with the ultimate power of love like literally not just any love like a naive middle school child love so even they like admit like it's a specific like superficial type of love but even that kind of love is very powerful so i like what they do with this show on in terms of like that type of messaging and that theming there as well um I do also like, uh, with how short the show t- is too, uh, the opening is fantastic. It's probably one of the best openings that they have. Uh, um, it's really catchy. Know, it's, it's so catchy with the cockadoodle dudes and everything. I do like how sometimes you'll get someone talking over the intro just cause they don't even care either. Uh, but there's one episode where one of the guys says is like someday we'll walk towards, uh, what was it? Paydays and happy days. It's like that, that's a mood. I too am striving to pay days and and a, and a brighter tomorrow. And then the episode when she's dead, she's just not in the opening title, but they still play it like normal because <laughs> she's dead, dude. Like they don't care. Again, another very common magical girl trope as well is uh you know just having your protagonist just straight die. And then again, and then at the end when it's like, oh, she she accept, she accepts her new life. Everybody kind of like has readjusts, and she she like she uh, she proclaims to go and like sc- to scour the universe and like find to find where Nova is. And she like she heard her new code name is Trigger, and I'm like, ah, they said it, they said the thing. Well, I mean, like the, the way, well, the whole yeah, the whole ending is like yeah, she she like the like the, the way she the way they beat the Black Holians is by pulling the trigger. And it's like, oh, they said they did the thing. <laughs> it feels very much kind of like an anniversary, like special because uh, Gynex and Trigger now they they they've done it a few times where like you know they'll make a show very exclusively to be you know a celebration of either the studio or of the last couple of years or of a certain movement. So like you can definitely tell like this was Trigger like they wanted to take advantage of this show. Luluko wasn't just made to be like, oh hey, we got a. We gotta fill the budget. Like, I love that this was made to to celebrate. This was made to to say something. This was meant to show something. Uh, it just it just makes Luluco feel like I said. It's one of those things where like it's taking something that a lot of people could see as worthless, as something of having no value, and it infusing with with just so much value, with so much meaning. That's like you know what you, you can't deny it. This is something very great and amazing. <laughs> and why I do I wish I wish that there was more because it there's it is so good that it's like you wish there was more of the of of this story and just see seeing seeing what other crazy stuff they can do. But it's also like it they they tell its story and like. It, they use their time like perfectly right so i was like i wish there was more but i also think that it is like it is the perfect amount uh like for for this so like i don't be i don't begrudgingly say that i don't think it's too short (laughs) i I, I wouldn't say i wouldn't say it's too i may want more but i'm also not gonna say it's too short see that's why we're making this whole like little series talking about trigger like we're making it a finite series because trigger has been the master of you know setting up a story that no matter the length it's finite it's to a specific length and that's all you get I think it'd be kind of neat that when we're done just talking about trigger shows, like we're done. Like we don't, that pulling the trigger doesn't go on for a couple of months. It's like, nope, we talked about what we needed to talk to you about. And now we're done. <laughs> I think that'd be uh, in the spirit. Except except when more trigger series show up and then we might talk about it. Obviously. Probably, but, we'll but, trigger us- yeah, trigger series usually come like once a year. So it's like, it's fine. It's basically just be like any normal podcast episode. Right. No, but uh, you had mentioned like the ending too. Uh, I love the ending for for the show. The opening is super catchy, but the ending is just super sweet. Uh, Peepo Password oh, yeah, the by a, very te- calming. Yeah. It's so good. Um, so it's by a Teddy Lloyd, who previously their big previous show on this was uh the the amazing soundtrack of Panty and Stocking. So you know it it ties in there. All of these uh magical girl shows, you know, they could have their own uh cool crossover show of different planets i'm just saying trigger has the rights now yeah that, that was what i was saying i was like i like lulico would be perfect for like a second season where they go and like do all the rest of the yeah now that now that they own gurren Logan and panty and stocking they could cross over with that see them cross over they already with... have did you not see over justice <laughs> well, well that but i mean like like more like like ha- have them cross over in, in, in into the Gridman universe with brand new animal oh. with promare maybe darling in the franks i don't know how that would work i don't know i would i was gonna can. say that just to cringe myself it's like yeah and then Luluco shows up and wonders why are you kids fucking in the robot (laughs) (laughs) i think that'd be a really really funny idea and the very very ending when you get you get that that get that little thing with with her and akko and it's like (laughs) oh 
Oh yeah, because they gotta they're, they're passing the torch. All of the trigger cares about its characters. It's it's, it's always really cute to, to see. They all they're also to the they're, they're they are the two purest uh uh, uh trigger protags. So yeah, that is, that yeah, is also I'd put that there. Akko's done nothing wrong. If anything, wrong things have happened to Akko yeah. several times, but she's usually not the one, the cause of the trouble. <laughs> oh, also in the Luluco, in the Luluco sequel, trying to get supernatural battles in there somehow. I don't know how. Just no, do it. get turning girls in there. What are you <laughs> talking about? I want, I want like live stream shenanigans. I want. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, and, like all of a sudden, then Luluko's meteorite comes in, and the background crashes into her room. And, like the webcam's still going. <laughs> See, it could work. No, I think no, I know. I, I think I think we'd be best with the with with the with the with the goth girl because then she would try to explain to the girls, and no one would believe her. Oh hell yes! <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else uh, to say about Luluko? Uh go and watch it as well like this was a really exciting batch like it's really impressive just what trigger was able to put out uh again with with these shorter shows in the length of time in the formats that they sent them out the fact that most of these like we had something fun and interesting to talk about with every single one even if you know in some cases i didn't thoroughly enjoy the the material itself it's still all of them had interesting, fun, different things that, you know, th- at least none of these were boring. None of these were, were bad. You know, Trigger, trigger not, may not always deliver, but it, it, it delivers quite often. Yep. If I had to do some obligatory ranking of all of the Trigger projects so far, I would say uh, Kill a Kill and Inferno Cop are S rank. If I got to do a tier list, yeah. they'd be S rank. Uh, Space Patrol Lulico is at A rank. And then uh, when Supernatural Battles became commonplace, Turning Girls and uh, Ninja Slayer are all uh, B-rank. Okay. Just because I feel like... It, N- Turning Girls is like, again, I feel like if that was a full series, it would definitely be like an A-rank tier. But it's like, it is so it is so short that I'm like, it feels like there, it needs more and it would just be like, just even better. Ninja Slayer is because it's like, it's got, it's got a lot of good stuff, but it's like, there's a lot that drags it down. So it kind of feels very middling. And again, Supernatural Battles, which is again, like, like I like Slice, I like Slice of Life. So it's like a lot of like, maybe like the, the bigger issues uh, I can slide by just because I enjoy like those type of stories even though like the project itself is kind of like more of an all over the place uh you you enjoyed that the slice of life anime highlighted the mundanity of everyday life because it made you appreciate your own life is that what you're saying yes this is exactly true well it's more it, it, it allows me to imagine allows me to imagine both a, a better and worse world but you know what i'm like i like, you know what it, it, it gives me it gives me when, when i am stressed out of my head like which is pretty ah. much every single day i can just lay back just watch cute people do cute and funny things and i'm like th- this this fills my neurotoxin with happiness i am i'm am ah, my serotonin my, how i missed you <laughs> thank you jesus uh, but no i'd rank them pretty similar to you um i'd place kill a kill and inferno cop as s rank uh i probably would put Luluco and Turning Girls both as an A rank though. I I just enjoyed Turning Girls, just everything like what it was trying to do, even if it was not long enough. Like what I got was still something I really thoroughly enjoyed and wanted more of. Um, and then yeah, I'd probably put Supernatural Battle and Ninja Slayer. They're, they're, they're either lower A's or B's because I feel I don't want to like narc on them either because I feel like some of these some of, a good chunk of my criticisms could also be tied to like just personal taste just that it was not something that was meant to hook me in anyway so like and that's fine that's cool um, but I still think it was there was this was good stuff like I said we we had a lot of fun things to at least discuss about them it's not like any of them was just schlock like at least there was effort and theming and design and colors put into all of them. Yep, yeah, pretty pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and it's just it gives you a lot of fun different options of the anime medium. Like it's not all, you know, 12 episode seasons of Attack on Titan or another Sword Art Online. It's not you know, a million isekai shows. Like, at least, you know, there's fun things that you can, like, sit down and watch a whole series in 30 minutes and get, like, a, the one of the weirdest fucking plots you ever got. Or you can 
sit down and watch a quick show that, you know, gives you something pretty funny and realistic or an entire fun look back on, you know, what was that now is just the beginning of Trigger's archive. But at the time, like that was their, you know, their, like I said, their celebration of what they had created so far that they were making it, they were doing it and they could cross themselves over with themselves. Um, but yeah, I just love that, you know, they're out there that, these things were created to create this variety in the medium, in animation in general. So, I mean, go go out and watch them. Go out and enjoy them. It's kind of the, the best part of what we've been doing with making these videos is that we've been going back and watching stuff that I forgot had totally crazy twists and, and fun moments in. So, yeah, I think it'd be, it'd be fun if everyone else got to enjoy them too, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yep, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, thank 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 you for sitting through sitting through this long mega mix. We we got. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have uh, you you're gonna you you're you're gonna, you probably might have seen in the description. I've got all of the episodes. I've got all of the parts listed out. So if you wanna like, so if you had decided to uh, come back, uh, like c come back and like rewatch it later uh, at certain time codes, you can see you you'll be able to see where uh, where how long each little segment uh, is. But I think I think we did a good job of like fitting everything into one big batch so for next so uh, next episode we next episode we'll be uh limiting it down just a tad a bit because we got more got more fuller series so they're probably more to talk about so though those will be more stretched uh on their own since we got uh both uh kisniver which is a series that again i have pretty much no i have no basis on like what kind of series it's going to be or like what direction it's going to go so that's another very blind uh, uh reaction for me and then also Little Witch Academia, both the two original movies and the full 25 episode uh, series, which I have seen some of and everything I've seen of it, I've really enjoyed. So I'm super excited to check that out. Oh boy, we're going to have a fun chat next time. <laughs> <laughs>